five. Um, I've never done this before through Zoom, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check the link. And for everybody watching, we apologize for whatever is gonna happen. We this is this really is in large part we're gonna be uh, kind of winging it, shooting from the hip. We don't know if any current members are gonna join us or not. Um, we're really hoping they do. Um, if not, we got a few things we're gonna talk about and then. Also, I'll, I'll keep repeating this a couple of times just so everybody knows we're going to, um, depending on how many members we do or do not get to join us here in this conversation, we're going to we'll kind of maybe transfer it a little bit into a, a Q&A video. So be thinking of questions. If you have questions for us, if you, um, if you have things you want to ask us or if you have things you want to say to us, um, and this is, again, this is both current members or former members, um, feel free to leave comments in the, or questions in the comment section. We'll try to be looking at those. Jesse and Tim, if you guys can pull up the live stream and then just make sure it's muted, the YouTube live stream, and then just kind of be keeping your eyes on the comments. And if you see a, a good question come up, um, if you can maybe just either copy it and paste it somewhat like in a note so, so we kind of remember it and don't lose track of it. Um, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, so I'm going to stream and then just kind of be keeping your eyes on the comments. And if you see I hear it, it's working. Yeah. Okay. I was about to tell you your audio is bad. Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, nope. I, I heard it. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Okay, so right now, I think I think since we don't have, it doesn't look like right now, well, we got, we have right now, we have iPad is the name. Um, and, and I don't know, that's me. iPad, that's you, okay. Just making sure that's not um, a member. We got Bobby, we got Ebenezer, we got Jesse, and we got iPad. <laughs> um, so it doesn't look like right now, we got a couple of form, or former members, and so, Ebenezer, you were getting a little bit into with Jesse your story. You said you you left the group. How long ago was it? Yeah, actually, <clears throat> can I share? Can I have uh, five minutes time on something? Yes, go for it. Go ahead. Actually, uh, my mom got baptized in two thousand twelve, uh, and I was also. Uh, baptized in 2013 and uh, we together worked very hard for the church uh, and I was taking care of a branch church also uh, in 2017 and I was a youth coordinator uh, in my church which consists of around 1000 members uh, when I went to my university for my higher education uh, there I, there I heard terms like accountability, answerability, rationality. Uh, in India, you know that people, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. For the very first time, I heard the terms like accountability and everyone should be accountable to everything. Uh, things like that, stuff like that. Uh, after that, I realized in myself that uh, uh, church is nowhere showing us the accounts or answerable. It's just uh, squeezing us for the money and uh, ex uh, it's exploiting us uh, financially a lot. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, India is a land of uh, superstitions. And uh, yep. uh, I came back and I asked in my church about the accountability, the money they collected. And uh, do you remember the Middle Ages? How Catholic Church used to behave. Yeah, how the Catholic Church dark, operated. Yeah. Dark ages, how it should uh, collect the money after uh, taking the tithe also, it should collect a lot more other uh, offerings. The same thing the WM, uh, the World Mission Society Church of God is doing so. After taking the tithe also, 10% accurately after taking the tithe, they are collecting uh, uh, money for rent, money for food, uh, and uh, special offering 
mother offering and uh, preaching also we have to uh, with all our expenses we have to do the preaching and if we take care any church or branch church we have to pay our own rent we have to cook with a uh, provide food to the members with our own money everything church is running under the money of the people hmm. every thing church is not spending 1 rupee also uh, if you re- if church requires a music system a member is donating the music system church requires a projector a member is uh, donating church requires chairs anything even myself i donated a laptop a television chairs uh, lot more lot more we donated to our donated donated to the church uh so you feel you feel like they were um, I, they were really just pressuring you to tithe and give offerings it, you kind of feel like it was a lot about the money for, at least at least in your situation they measure you with the amount of money you give world mission society church of god measure you with the amount of money you give and i have all the call recordings uh, i just asked them about the accounts i just asked them to show the accounts how much money they are collecting how much money they are spending for the church how much they are uh, giving to abroad for other churches i just asked them for the accounts and they just uh, bet me and they just uh, the pastor i want to show him i want to expose him i have all the proofs we have a I I have a question in the comments I think for you. Um somebody's asking you if the rent for the branch or house churches uh did they pay was it paid directly by the members or was the money donated to the church and then the church paid the rent? No no no. Members used to donate to the church and church used to pay it later. Okay. So is that is this kind of what eventually kind of led you to leave the group was the situation that you uh or kind of the attitude that they had toward money can you see this person yep yeah who's that uh, this is the person who had an assault on me for asking just accounts okay just asking accounts he did an assault on me he bet me like a physical a f- physical assault yeah a physical assault i have all the recordings all the proofs what they did and i even approached the human rights commission also for what they have did and if they are true if they have any pinch of honesty they should show the accounts right yeah. they are hiding to show their accounts okay so again is that what made you leave eventually is that what caused you to leave and lot more things lot more things like yeah. uh, see what they preached us is uh mr christ and mr ansam ko uh, uh mr ansam ko was led a that led 30 years an ordinary life uh in the span of uh, 30 years only he married he had children yeah so that that's, that's something that i've found a lot of members are really struggling so with when they dis- me, they discover let the me, let, let me finish Yeah sorry <laughs> let me finish No go Actually, ahead I I'm struggling with uh, forming the english sentences so No that's to, okay I I I beg your pardon That's okay uh, we can understand you pretty well Yeah We'll try I mean I I would like to try to we got a couple other people so I don't want to spend the whole time here but I'd like to hear a couple more thoughts from you and then yeah. we'll, we'll try to yeah, move yeah. on I I I want to finish it uh see uh the founder the Ansam Home what they told us he had an ordinary life like all other human beings till 30 years in 30 years uh, at the age of 30 he got enlightened he left his family he left his children uh, he left everything he came out he was uh, living by breaking stones uh, and lead and led the church and later what i found in wikipedia is he got married at the age of 36 years <laughs> and he had four children yep yeah after his enlightenment he led a uh, ordinary human being like yes and uh, which thing surprised me a lot is uh the thing they say about spiritual marriage uh, which is which, which is done between uh, jangil ji and uh, an sang hong right right an sang hong did not divorce his wife physical wife so 
the reason they t- tell is it's just a physical uh, it's just a spiritual marriage which was done for uh, jangil and ansongo that's the reason he did not left his physical wife there be same but did you observe jangil ja left his uh, left her husband and married uh, ansongo right all, all the biggest thing is you should not bible biblically all the blunder everyone is doing is they're debating with, with those people biblically yeah he it's a perfect cult it's a definition of cult and these people gonna destroy the world if they are left they are unquestioned they are not challenged they are running an organization called we love you foundation are your god after all you are a god why you need a nobel prize in india brother i want to share you the situation we are we, we even not provided gloves or mask when we are cleaning the roads or we are cleaning the drainages we used to do with bare hands without any uh, personal protection just what the drug they used to give it, they used to give a drug not physical drug uh, mental drug what they used to say is for every single activity you gonna blessed some 15 to 20000 times in heaven means if you give a dollar you gonna earn 20000 dollars in heaven they are doing real estate in heaven they are selling you planets it's wow. a multi level marketing it's hmm. a multi level marketing uh, recruiting everything they have perfect cult like uh, characteristics they the leaders don't have good personality see uh, we, we i appreciate people like you for exposing this cult hmm. and uh, for giving opportunity to me if you ask any questions i going to answer you it's a better way i think so That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that and it's interesting that you brought up you brought up the the part with um his kids with Sorry, you brought up the part with Ong Song Hong's kids and I'm I'm talking Bobby is is here with us as well. And I don't Bobby, if you don't want to if you don't want to share your audio, that's fine. I know some of you are wanting to stay a little bit more low key. Um which is uh which is okay but if you want if you're willing to share i know here in the comments you mentioned that i asked what made you leave and you specified that it was the fact that you found out it looks like you're saying ong song hong had kids no and, that, that's the one of the reason second reason is 000% accountability they don't never show their accounts to the members they collect mm. heavy money huge sums of money uh uh-huh. no accountability if you ask See, in uh, India, every Protestant church, even Catholic churches, give you uh, a statement, account. Hello? We're listening. Yep. Yeah. In India, every church gives you annual statement. Means how much offerings they got, how much they spent on church activities. Everything they will be giving an uh, annual statement. but wmc og never discloses uh, its collections and how much money it spent yeah zero percent uh, there is no accountability answerability and uh, see if you want if they want to remove from the church that's a second for them to remove there is no even procedure uh, no protocol so did you did you and your mom both leave he i i was the one who asked them about accountability answerability and everything what my mom did after all she did she was paying her tithe she was paying her sabbath offerings she was uh, going for visiting the members she was very good she did not know the suddenly said sister you don't come if they are honest they should have agony on me but uh, what my mom did they sh- their their connected to you and therefore suffered the consequences of uh what it sounds like you prying too much you asked a question that they they didn't want to talk about yep which is um and what that kind of points back to is is just if a group is true and if they don't have dark secrets to reveal then they're not going to care about people prodding and prying they're going to be able to have confidence in that and so it looks like a, there's a comment here from the youtube stream um 
It says, it seems like the WMSCOG is much harsher on members in countries like India and Nepal. Uh, Nepal members also reported being beat by the overseer. So did you ever see anything like that, Ebenezer, any kind of physical abuse? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I was late for the Bible study. And this, the person I showed you, right, he's my pastor. We, we, we call him as Gypsani. And he bet me for being late to the Bible study. See, the mind control, the thing, how they're trying to control the mind. Even uh, if I was caught hanging with my friends, they used to see like I was doing some crime. Uh, see, uh, everything was limited. Uh, you, you don't have, you should not hang out with your friends. You can't go to relatives. You can't go to vacations. Everything was carted in the name of spirituality. Very, I, I just, I was searching for the proofs. I'll show you. I'll show you. Okay. You, uh, show us that Ebenezer. And we're going to, we're going to switch directions here in a minute. And I'm going to kind of, I don't, I'm not aware of who's watching live on YouTube, but I'd like to give an opportunity to some current members to say something in the comments or, or join us. And so we're going to see what happens there. So go ahead and share that. And we're going to, Again, we're going to kind of switch directions for a minute. Did you have something you wanted to show us? Yeah, I have a call recording. I'm searching how to share with you. Okay. I don't know that that's going to show up very well on the audio. It, we might hear it, but everybody else watching may not. So... That might be a good thing that you could uh, maybe email to us afterwards. Um, yes. and I, I, it's actually the fight between me and the pastor. Uh, actually, it's in uh, our uh, vernacular language and uh, mix it with uh, English also. You can understand probably what I'm asking. Okay. Hey, and feel free again to uh, stay in touch with us through email and stuff. And we've been connecting with um, people through like uh, what's what's app and things like that. And so, I'm I'm not the person. I'm not a random member coming out speaking. See, I was I was representing WMCOG in media. They say cover uh, photo, right? Cover uh, uh, cover boy, poster boy. Oh. Okay. Yep. I was I was representing them. I was. Uh, I shared this information with uh, Dory and uh, Dory. Okay. Yeah. We have somebody in the comments telling you and encouraging you to share the audio you're talking about, to share that on YouTube. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you have a YouTube channel or something, but that might be a good way to get that out. You might, if you do that, you might do it anonymously. If you have a, a YouTube account, you could maybe create that doesn't have your name attached, which at this point, as we're sharing this live, that might not <laughs> See, uh, that might not work out too well. We're kind of advertising it, but in India we can sue them. Uh, we can sue WMCOG because uh, whatever the activities they are doing is illegal in India. Because oh really? They don't have, they don't have registration for their churches. Okay. I think I, think I alerted them. <laughs> okay. See, from the time of their inception till now, no church is recognized by the government of India. India is a secular country, democratic country, and you can uh, follow whatever religion. You are encouraged to follow whatever religion you want. You can propagate it. That's a fundamental rights in India. And okay. The World Mission Society Church of God operates without registration. Okay. In India. And it works in a disguised name called We Love You Foundation in India. And as an NGO, and let me tell you, if a church works, or not only church, any religious organization work uh, in the disguise of NGO in India, it's a criminal offense. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing. I'm going to, I'm going to mute you for a minute. I'm muting people who aren't going to be speaking and I want to give Bobby, Bobby just jumped back in and he seems like he's maybe been in a similar spot as you he's a former member again bobby i don't know if you hear me um you said you heard me earlier if you if you don't want to share audio that's fine if you don't um 
want to jump on that way, it's fine. I want to say too, to people in the comments right now, if you didn't hear me earlier, go ahead and send uh, your questions, put, put your questions on the comments. We're trying to watch those. Jesse and Tim and I are trying to watch those as best as we can. And we'll try to pull out uh, some of the most uh, interesting ones, the ones we think will be most helpful. Um, as we're here, we got we got a couple people that just joined the uh, meeting as well. And so, if if you are a, a current member, if you're if you're in the Zoom meeting right now, if you could just and you want to say something to us in the meeting, just uh, join with your audio turned on, or just let me know in the comments. I'm watching that too, and so I'm I'm seeing you guys join, but I don't. I don't really know if you're a former member, if you're just wanting to sit in on, on the conversation or what. Um, I do really quick. I see, I, I see it. We should pass this unless we're, it said, Bobby said he's working on his mic. Okay. We should, uh, this would be a fun question to pass to Tim. I don't know if Tim's up for a question at the moment. Yes. I'll yeah, do it. Zoom chat, Tim, you can look at it. And if you don't feel like touching on it right now, that's totally cool. I just put it in the Zoom chat, Tim curious your opinion uh tim so, a brother in the lord uh was on a couple of videos and um is also part of the hebrew roots movement and is just very very knowledgeable of uh the torah and all this and so we were very excited to have him come along because he yep. was able to touch on this a little bit better than me and jordo yes go ahead jesse and read that question and then yeah you ready tim i'll read it for you Oh, yeah, I th think, let me so unmute him. There. Says, yeah. after, after Emperor Constantine abolished Passover and after he died 1,000 years ago, weren't there churches still keeping Passover? This church insists that An Song Hong restored the Passover. This would prove that he did not restore the Passover. So, Tim, what do you say to that? Um, yeah, so saying that people kept Passover during like the Dark Ages, is that kind of... Yeah, he says it was abolished by Constantine. So this person's saying, well, if people actually were keeping it, then that kind of just throws out his whole argument. Yeah, there were. Um, it's hard to find uh, references of Passover. There were a lot that uh, a lot of references for Sabbath, uh, fewer for Passover. But but there were indeed people that kept uh, the 14th of uh, you know of that month, um, and it was kind of debated amongst them because. Because Easter um, was also coordinated to be the first day or it's the first Sunday after the full moon after the spring equinox, which is pretty much always right like the first Sunday after Passover. Um, so but there were there were people debating that, um, wanting to keep the actual Passover rather than uh, the Easter thing. but a lot of terminology becomes mixed with Passover and Easter. Uh, there are many people that kept Passover, but they said it was Passover, but really it was Easter. And, and, and so like the Eastern Orthodox, I think, continue to call it Passover, but really it was more like Easter. So there's a lot of, it's difficult to track during that time. Yeah, I got you. But it's not, it, uh, it's not wrong to say that people were most likely still yeah. practicing Passover. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't restored, and uh, I can't remember when they say he restored it, but it wasn't restored in the 1948 or the 50s. Yeah, or no. Uh, the guy, the probably the most famous person to really popularize it that I know of would be Herbert W. Walker or uh, Armstrong. Armstrong. Uh, yeah. Who yeah. I think that there's a lot of good evidence that suggests that he that Ong Song Hong got a lot of his ideas from him. Um, yeah. And, and if, if you want to know more about that, you can go look at a couple of the videos we've done with uh, Kelsey, the former member, and, and we went a little bit more. She went in a little bit more into detail about that. Um, yeah. yeah, that's good. I have a one, one. I'm going to point this out, a comment we got from Mark Engel in the live chat. He said, my son joined two years ago. He is now estranged from his entire family. This is a terrible group. Um, and this is this is something that's like a heartbreaking message we're getting in some form on a regular basis. Um, and I, I think really, I think this comes from, you know, they, they use the verses where it talks about if you have to leave father, mother, sister, brother, if you want to follow me, Jesus says that. 
would you guys say that they take that to an extreme when they, they separate families in the way they do? We have people telling us on a regular basis that, you know, they might have children in the group and um, the children or the, the siblings will just refuse to have contact or relationship unless the, the family comes and comes to the, the church, comes to the WMSCOG and joins them. And um, I, I, I guess on the one hand, what I'm, what I'm saying is I can sympathize because I get that Jesus says, you know, I know there's that reality. Jesus says we have to leave father, mother, brother, sister, if we want to follow him. But at the same time, should that look like the way it often looks like in the WMSUG, where you have families ripped apart and you have members of families within the WMSUG who are refusing to have any contact with their family? To me, that just seems like an abuse. That seems like a great abuse of what Jesus said. What do you guys think? Uh, just my first thought is just... Uh when I read that, it seems like it's in the midst of there will be persecution for following me and there will be division for following me, which we see, um, you see, especially like in the Middle East or even in Israel, when uh, they uh, recognize Jesus as the Messiah, that they're totally, they're excommunicated from their family or in the Middle East, they're excommunicated from their family because they follow Jesus. This seems like backwards to me. It's like, uh, Jesus didn't come off like when you follow me, make sure you excommunicate your whole family. Don't talk to them. Right. Uh, we shun them. It's like, no, that's the, it's literally swapped. So I think that should be the first like red flag is like, this is the opposite of what Jesus described. Yep. Right. And, and then there's a, there's a verse, I think it's in Timothy where it talks about anybody who doesn't take care of the needs of their own family is worse than an unbeliever. Worse than an infidel. Yeah. And so there's, there's a way to be faithful to what Jesus says. There's a way to be faithful to, to love him above our mother, father, brother, sister, you know, to love him and have our devotion be to him. But at the same time, do that in such a way that we're still honoring our mother and father and brother and sister. And, and it's, it's interesting to me that there's so much emphasis put on by this group put on keeping the commandments and they'll emphasize, you know, the, the Sabbath is one of the 10 commandments, but in this, it seems like they don't put much emphasis or focus on the fact that honoring your father and mother is also a commandment. And it's the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you. And so it seems like it's another example, Tim, of what we've talked about where they're focusing in on the less weighty matters of the law, uh, to and exchanging that for the more weighty matters, the more significant matters. I mean, I, I would just say, kind of shooting from the hip here, but I would just say personally, when I think God looks at the commands, I think He would hold the command of loving and honoring our father and mother above the observance of of Sabbath, <laughs> um, the the outward ritual of observing a certain day. I would say God's more concerned, not that he's not concerned with the other commandments, but I would think that's a more weighty thing in his mind that he would want people to love and honor your parents and your family above focusing on the rituals and the observances to the neglect of loving and honoring. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my thoughts. Um, I have, okay, so we got a couple more that jumped in and I'm just going to give them a chance to see if anybody here. Is the link on the YouTube, somebody in YouTube's asking how they're supposed to, or how they can join. Yes. So if you, if you're on the live YouTube video, the, if you look in the description of the video, the very first thing you'll see is a link to the, to the zoom meeting. So um, if you are a current, we're, again, we're kind of focused on trying to get current members. Um, we have a couple former members in here and we've heard a little bit from them. Uh, this, we, we do want to do, we'll probably do this in some way more regularly. And so we, we would love to give an opportunity to focus more on just gathering former members and it'd be kind of fun to just uh, talk in this platform. Tonight, we're just, um, we're focused more on, we'd really like to address the current members and, and give them an opportunity to speak. Um, I know the comment section of, of YouTube has kind of been, um, yeah, stirred up a lot. There's been some hostility and some anger, um, and some, a lot of arguments being presented. And so, 
Um, we don't always have time to give those as much attention as we'd like, and this is just a much easier way to give you an opportunity to share your thoughts. So, so again, we're just saying if you're a, a current member, uh, we love to hear your thoughts, and even even if you don't feel comfortable joining us in this conversation, then uh, just leave a comment in the comment section. We'll try to address it. Um, before before I address the guys here in the group, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to them. Jesse, Tim, do you guys have any thoughts? Anything you want to share before I keep going? Carry on. Um, yeah, no, just more like I wanted uh, on YouTube. Uh, the name is E seven zero nine. Uh, I see your question. I don't know, but I want to wait. I'm hoping somebody on here would want to address that, especially like Ebenezer or somebody who's an ex member um, of the. Uh, can someone explain Revelation 22:17? Why do they say SDA um, is the Church of Laodicea? I don't oh, even seventh, know. Seventh Day Adventists is yep. the Church of Laodicea. Do you know Tim? That's I don't it. Know yeah. Why they say that? Oh, okay. Yeah. But that's what they're referring to, I'm sure. Um, huh. I always ask, Kel Kelsey, if you're in the comments, and if you know the answer to that. Um, I just wanted that person to know we're not ignoring them. It, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're not ignoring those questions there. I see it looks like maybe a couple people asked something similar to that. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that down so we don't forget. Um, honestly, right now, I don't know the answer to that, and I don't think – well, obviously, Jesse and Tim both said they don't as well. So um, if somebody does and wants to uh, even share that in the comments, feel free to do that. Um, otherwise, we'll continue. I, uh, it looks like we have um, – Bobby, I'm going to give you a chance again to see if you got your audio working. We have um, Bobby in the comments. Um, yeah, can you hear me? I hear you good, yeah. Okay, good. Sorry. I was going on a – I'm like walking, kind of jogging. I have my headphones on. I didn't yeah, that's like okay. To hear that. No problem. Okay. So I'm just kind of want like the beginning to the end kind of summary. Well, I think um, I'm just curious, kind of more a, a short idea of like what um, what caused you to leave. Like, kind of what was the main kind of kicker that made you say, "Okay, I can't do this anymore. I've got to get out of this thing." Okay. On the main kicker, by that time, like I said in the comments, I've been in, I was in the truth close to eight months. And by that time, I guess the deacon liked me. Um, he was trying to move me up to maybe like a team leader. Okay. And actually, um, my wife, which is still in World Mission Society Church of God, um, we actually, my wife's in the Navy, and at that time, we actually lived on base, like on the Navy base, and they were wanting, to, I'm actually here in uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. And uh, they were wanting to kind of spread out, yep. you know, just kind of preaching like in like where the church was kind of at, but they wanted, you know, to go to try to get the whole city. So uh, the deacon kind of made it to try to, uh, how, would I say, how do I say it? Kind of set up like some little headquarters throughout the city. And he was trying to make my house. So what was going to happen was maybe like, half of the people on certain days of the evening of the church members so say like maybe 10 of them would come to my house on post i would have to bring them on meet at my house and then go throughout the base and preach but before that we had a meeting of how it was going to go about and the deacon literally said he said i don't want to or I'm gonna kind of sound stereotyping, but he literally said, if you find out that people don't have a job and don't have a vehicle, don't waste your time pretty much, don't preach to them. And at, okay. and at, and at that time, the kind of the motto or the saying was, let's preach to 7 billion people. And I always was thinking like, well, how can we preach 
to 7 billion people when you're giving me, you know, regulations, restrictions of who I can't preach to. Yep. So that's when I just said, you know what, I'm not going to go any further, you know, and then have them all in my house. And so I was like, I just told my wife, uh, it was actually a third day today, a Tuesday. And I just told my wife, I'm like, I'm done with this. That was, so that was when did, did that happen? Oh, this was still, this was probably, um, I want to say two years or a year and a half. Okay. So you, I, you've been out for a while then. Well, my wife is still in. Oh, okay. So how, how that's interesting. There's probably, you know, a lot of people that are in your situation where you've got, uh, a relationship like yours where one of you's in one of you's out so uh, how how is that how is that walking that out and doing life together it isn't to be to be honestly it's not it's not good because to me i maybe show her more respect to her you know her religion but when it comes to me you know like um because i don't believe in any of that stuff um, and I'm actually currently now, I don't really, you know, go to any church. I'm kind of, you know, limbo, but like, if I, like, I love music, but if I listen to Christian music or something, like it's a big deal. If, uh, I watch TV and some kind of, you know, Christian, or let's say, you know, we just had Christmas, which I don't really celebrate, but I, like growing up, I watch, you know, the Santa Claus, the Christmas story, like all these classics growing up. And I would watch it and it was just a big deal. Oh, you, you can't watch that. Get that out. You know, kind of like putting the, that's the devil. That's Satan. Don't put that yeah. in my house. And I'm like, I just look at him like I'm a grown man and I, it's my house. And I can't, I can't watch something in my house right. where I can listen to. It's, it's even got to the point where um, I sell on eBay and Amazon and there's certain things like they don't believe in the cross. That's a, like an idol. So there's certain things that I've sold yep. that, has, that has a cross on it. And there's been times where my wife has found out and she just throws it away and I've like paid money for it. Okay. <laughs> so we're constantly yep. fighting about that. Well, man, I'm so, I'm sorry about that, and that's um, that's man. Just know you should know, and I'm sure you already do that. You're not alone in this thing. There's so many people that have and are experiencing what you are, and the the uh, the junk that kind of comes with this. Um, but we, yeah, appreciate you sharing that uh, with us here. And it's um, it sounds like maybe what really kind of pushed you over the edge was maybe just could be boiled down to the character that you saw these people operating in. Would you maybe, would you say yeah, it that way? No, it was the character because um, when I first got in, like you've heard many times, you know, they kind of are nice to you and whatnot, but the further, cause I'm prior military. And I think what got me to move up to a leader, I guess so fast, because you know, I right away got a suit, you know, um, I dry clean it. Uh, I get haircuts every week. You know, I got that. I still got that military. Uh, Jesse would know about that. Of. Yeah. And then even on, I, I never want to be late. I'm always like 30, 45 minutes early. And like the deacon seen that. Um, but once I got more into it, then I guess the deacon or other people thought like, oh, he's actually really one of us. So we'll actually kind of start to let him know more. Like he was thinking that he was going to say like, oh, don't preach, you know, people with cars or that are jobless. And he's thinking like, oh, it's going to be fine with me. Yep. Well, but it wasn't. It looks like I'm seeing some comments here on the side. People um, we have. Telly tells, I'm not sure if I'm saying that name right, but I've, I've seen you a lot. You're a, you've been a faithful follower. So we appreciate that. But, um, you're, I know you've had some strain in your own relationship with your husband, um, who is a member and, and obviously you are not. And so again, yeah, we, our thoughts and prayers were 
praying for, for your guys' situation. And, uh, I, yeah, I think just as an encouragement, just encouraging you guys to persevere in this thing. And I think God is able to turn the situation around and do more than you can imagine. Um, so Jesse looks like you're gearing up to say something. Oh, I just like, and I, um, just to speak on behalf, make Jordan nervous, speak on behalf of Great Light Studios. Uh, I just know, um, that we would never want to encourage somebody um, get a divorce, leave, be done with it. Um, this is too much. Um, we, d- we can't say we know what it's like, but we would absolutely encourage you to intercede for your spouse, to, to be on your knees, be, be uh, praying for them. And I know it's easier said, I, I'm not going through this, but this is me going from Ephesians that, you know, we're supposed mm-hmm. to treat our so as husbands, treat our wives as Christ t- treated the church and Christ has been patient with his bride and and consistent and interceding and so yeah i just like to make a statement in in this world this but not even just this church we're talking about but the world like we just so honor and respect marriage and so we really encourage you we're so sorry you're going through this um and yeah always open to emails and stuff and uh would love to also pray on your behalf uh yeah that are going through this well, while we're right here, let's do, let's, let's just, Jesse, give a quick prayer for, for people in that situation. Cause I know there's so many, and then, uh, we're going to continue on. There's a couple more, there's a comment I want to address. Uh, and then a couple, couple people that have joined us that we'll, we'll, uh, talk to. And so Jesse, if you, if you're good with that, why don't you just say a prayer real quick for this is, we just want to lift up those of you who are in a situation with family member family members in this group uh we we know god's able to work in that situation so yeah so father um almighty god i just i thank you for your grace and your mercy father i thank you that you know these people's heart you know what they're going through right now lord i ask that you'd minister to them in this moment um even our friend bobby i just i just ask that you'd give him comfort your comfort that transcends all understanding uh give them wisdom I pray that they'd, they'd know what is wisdom uh, from you and what is wisdom from the principalities of the air and the world, Lord. I pray that they would be able to decipher this. Uh, and yeah, Father, I ask above all that you would restore these marriages. I pray that you would bring their spouses out of this lie, that you'd restore these marriages. And uh, Lord, just uh, give them endurance through this. Just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, so there's... Uh, we got a comment in the live feed from, I'm going to say this name wrong, but it's Gitesh Tambe, Tambe, Gitesh Tambe. I don't, I know I'm, sh- I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure, but uh, I believe this is a current member who has been in the comments a lot. And so he um, simply commented by saying, um, he said, oh no, Demas live. And so I think the insinuation was, we are Demas who have apostatized and left the church. And so I, I'm just pointing this out to ask, um, you're, you're in the comments. So I just ask if there's things that we have said in the videos, if there's challenges you'd like to present, I would just encourage you to do that. We, we really do want to hear your, your side of it. Uh, we want to hear your thoughts. And so if you're, if you're still on the live stream um, and you have anything more to say or to ask, then please do so. Um, so which we really, go ahead, Jesse. We, yeah. We just really mean that Jordan has control over this. So he's able to mute. So even if there's X members on here, somebody who maybe say you come on here and you start getting attacked, Jordan will on your behalf, mute or take that person off. Yes. For really, sure. I'm just saying this is now the time for a member that's on here. You have non-members, X members, making a lot of claims, this would be the time to humbly present your case. Um, and we would, uh, gladly listen. Yep. So as we're waiting, we also saying hi, Kelsey has joined us here in the meeting. Um, I just told her to go ahead, go ahead and come in because I know we're going to have things we don't know that we need to ask you. So I don't know why I didn't just have you come in in the first place. So hi, Kelsey. Thanks for being here. Hey, no problem. Um, okay, so we have uh, Ray is in the comments. I don't, again, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking to you in the comments. 
Ray, I don't know if you want to stay anonymous. It looks like you said you have something you would like to share. Oh, yeah. um, Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, how are you this afternoon? Could you, I'm sorry, can you say that once more? You're a little yeah, bit quiet. I said, I said good, good evening or good afternoon, wherever you're at. I don't yes. know what, the, what location you guys are at, but um, I, I, am a, I, am a current, I am a current member of uh, World Mission Society Church of God, and I've been in uh, for quite some time, and I, I don't, I just barely been in your room here for about eight minutes, 10 minutes, yep. so kind of late, but uh, I don't know where to, where, where I would begin to maybe explain a little bit, but yeah, uh, I, I'll, I'll start from the point that I'm, I'm a happy member for quite some time and I want the same thing. Like I believe everybody probably around the world and probably in this chat room that wants to uh, believe in um, God almighty Elohim or whatever persuasion that people want to put the title on with God or savior. Um, from my, from my perspective, um, I just, we just finished celebrating the Passover. I know you guys were speaking about that a little bit mm -hmm. and about preaching. Uh, the answer is yes, all the above. And just recently, I would say that I was, um, just evaluating because Passover is just not something that if you look at the scriptures from Paul's perspective, if you celebrate the Passover without uh, recognizing, you know, what, what we're doing here and why we're doing it, you're bringing judgment on yourself, self-evaluation, self-recognition, uh, inner growth, um, all the above, you can put all these different types of things. And so every year that I've celebrated the Passover, um, it's quite an amazing event for me. And knowing that the church of yesterday, the church of our forefathers kept the Passover. And so now I, now I get to keep the Passover. And I don't want to be all over the map, but getting a little bit yeah. according to the gentleman that you had about, he's in the military in Florida. Um, that was just speaking? Yeah, that he was yeah. just speaking. Uh -huh. uh, I, too, used, uh, am a prior service member. Uh, not while I was in the military, but um, I know what he's talking about, being, um, you know, asked to lead or asked to be in a group or church leader or uh, unit leader or something of that nature. Um, I, I, this is just my outlook. I don't like to criticize, and I won't criticize people, but... Sometimes it's just to be, it's just good to be like observe and really if somebody wants to be a church leader, to be a church leader, to be recognize that um, I have a, I have, maybe I have a, a certain agenda or just because I look somehow, some way that I'm presenting myself like I could be a leader. Um, but at the same time, the, the leaders will present themselves, I believe in the church uh, people who are faithful, reading the Bible, reading, reading, uh, reading the necessary material to uh, believe in God. And the main focus is preaching. Um, that's how I, I really see the, uh, the work that we're doing, um, preaching to the whole world. And I know that's kind of maybe vague or a little foggy. But on the last point that I wish to make on your platform this evening is uh, if I go back to uh, the book of Acts, uh -huh. Acts, Acts chapter 5, verse 39, okay. and you guys are pretty much uh, understood what happened in the time uh, that the, how can I say it, the disciples were being accused, right? And they were accused of spreading a gospel uh, about Jesus, and they didn't like that. So, the, the work of the, the disciples after post-Jesus, um, there was a point in this, this whole particular chapter where it says, uh, therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it's from God, you will not be able to stop these men. And you will only find yourself fighting against God. Though mm -hmm. we have... 
though we have different ideologies, different perspectives, different points of view as far as gospel is concerned, as you start seeing the the spread of the gospel from World Mission Society Church of God, it keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. So with that, I wanted to see if any of your members see why that is happening in, in, in immense numbers. And since it's yeah. not being really stopped, do, does anybody take the point of view that this is growing because it's God's will? So I'm, I'll, Tim, actually, I saw you're gearing up, so I want you to go ahead and go ahead and reply to that. Yeah, I, I just had my quick, my immediate thought was um, the Catholic Church, I think me and me and Ray could both agree that the Catholic Church um, twists a lot of things and does a lot of things wrong. And they grew exponentially, uh, spread throughout the world, the Holy Roman Empire. Um, that was no validation of truth or of God's will that they could spread about so much false stuff and do so much damage to believers. Then the Reformation came and they were able to correct some of that stuff. Um, but but numbers and, uh, exp and growing and stuff isn't a validation of, of, uh, of truth, I guess. Yeah. So I think what, what I think of, um, and first I want to say, um, Ray, I just really appreciate you coming on and I appreciate you not being hostile and, um, mm -hmm. and just your, your tone is respectful. And so that's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying this honestly, not just as an attack at the WMSCOG. That's a very, very rare thing that I've found. Um, 90, I would say close to 95 to 99% of the members I come across, and this is unfortunate, it's not something I enjoy, but 99% of them are hostile and they're not willing to have a respectful uh, dialogue about these things. So I'm just saying I really appreciate you coming on and being willing to share that and just ask honest questions. Um, and so... I, I think my my response to be uh, in line with kind of what Tim is saying is um, I would just um, hold on one second. I need to mute somebody. Oh, they muted themselves. Okay, I I would say, and I'm I'm quoting this from a friend who um, a friend of mine who had a conversation with um, uh, WMSCOG members in the past year, I think, and. Uh -huh they kind of brought this, this same question, I think, or the same challenge, that, that is to say that they said, well, the WMSCOG is growing at such a rapid rate and nothing is stopping it. Isn't that evidence that this church is from God? And his response, and so uh, again, I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying, I, I don't say this in an offensive way, but just kind of to make the point, his response was to say, well, Coca-Cola is growing at a rapid rate and, and it's not being stopped as well. And that doesn't necessarily prove that it's from God. And so I, I would take it to another place and say Mormonism has been growing at a rapid rate for a long time. Um, many, there's many, many religious groups uh, that are growing at a rapid rate. I believe the it's the Shinchanji group out of South Korea. I don't know if I'm saying that name correctly, but um, there, there's just many groups that are have detracted from fundamental uh Christian doctrine that I would say likewise are also growing rapidly. Um, and, and even if we just focus on Mormonism, um, I've sat down with Mormons and they've said that same, they've, they've used that same exact argument with me. And they've used the line of, if this isn't true, then why is it that we're so big? Why is it that we're growing? Why is it, you know, and they'll use those same kind of arguments. I think all that to say, we, we just have to end with what Tim simply said is that, the fact that a group is large and growing is not validation that it's from God. Um, yes. That would simply I, be I was, my, yeah. If I was going to interject real quick, I was just pointing because I, I was, my main point was the Passover. The okay. Passover, Sabbath day of those types of, those types of biblical practices that we do that are, you, they cannot be denied that the Sabbath day is truly uh, the worship day of God. The Passover is, is truly kept in the New Testament by the apostles of the early church. Uh, all these festivals that are in the doctrine that we practice or the teaching, biblical teachings and the application right. are all can be done, not just by the numbers. Numbers mean nothing. You know, like yeah. you're, you're, you're making the, the valid point that just because 
uh, Coca-Cola selling the number one co uh, drink in America doesn't really mean anything. But I was going more back to, that's why I, I brought Passover first. And mm -hmm. we can truly hold firm that the Passover biblically is true and correct to keep. And so that's why I brought that up first. Okay. Tim, why don't you comment on that? Sure. Uh, yeah, Ray, I'm, I'm in a group of people that would agree with you on that, that, that Sabbath always was the seventh day. Passover always was for believers in Jesus. Um, I believe and teach that to anyone that'll listen to me, you know. Um, but, you know, the, like the World Mission Society isn't the only group that's that's teaching that. Um, I think where it begins to differ is the over elevation of Passover to where it becomes a salvation issue, which uh, I would I think that's elevating it above righteousness, justice faith, mercy, the weightier matters that uh, Jesus brought up to the Pharisees in Matthew 23. So you have to keep it within its with within where it needs to be. Um, and then on top of that, you know, there's, I would, I would definitely differ with the belief in the Godmother and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I got it. Kelsey, uh, real quick, Kelsey, I don't know if we've, we might have gone too far, but you, you mentioned you wanted to uh, speak to something. So if, if we yeah. haven't, if you, if we're still on topic, go ahead. Yeah. yeah no, no, I mean, I, I like, I like to speak to both if possible, but um, in regards to like the church growing and, and again, I'd too like to say thank you Ray for, you know, like a, like palm tone respectful. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, but in regards to like the, the church growing, right. Cause I know that when I was a member of the church um, like they would, for, for a while they would tell every year that there are um you know the members and this you know it, and it would increase every single year and i think now they're reporting over i think now the church is reporting over three million members right but um where is the the validation that there are actually three million members in the church because i think that it is it seems that what's being counted is even like all members who have been baptized so even me I've been baptized, but I'm pretty sure I'm still being counted in that 3 million number. But I'm, I, I do not consider myself a member of the World Mission Church of God. Um, can, you, can you speak to, to that? Sure. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, this, this is not a, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a leader. I'm not a high, uh, you know, I'm not in the, uh, like I said, the leaders group and things of that nature. But if I'm going to be touching on numbers and, Kind of we came to the i think as a group came to conclusion numbers really don't mean anything and as far as far as counting numbers I, i'm not, i don't have no no understanding if they're being counted or not being counted just the same way i guess in the bible where it says three thousand or five thousand were baptized how many of those are being counted as christians Who, whoever said that you know if we're being baptized in the in the new testament and the new church how many of those that got baptized one day and they fell away the next day. Is that part right. of the 5,000? So the same type of argument can be uh, be said of the three and the 5,000 when the church was growing. So I, I see your right. point, but I don't have the exact numbers and how the calculations or figures. But again, biblically, numbers really don't mean anything. I only use the term that the process of God's salvation and in, in our church, it's growing. Not to put that as the upper number or the main important factor. The main important factor here is that people are keeping the laws of God. They're keeping the practices that Jesus did on Sabbath day and things of that nature. So numbers, I don't know. Uh, I don't really pay attention to numbers, but I only use it again to show in, in Acts chapter 539, where it, it is growing. It is being, it is being, uh, as you, as you as group knows very, very, very precisely how, how it goes. And people are believing in God the Mother. People are believing in the Sabbath. People are believing in the Passover. People are believing in Spirit and the Bride. So these people who come, whether they're counted as far as numbers is concerned, I don't know, but I have faith that the mission will continue to, to be uh, delivered. Uh, people will be coming to whatever truth inside of them will, you know, whatever God allows in their life. And if I could just say something, uh, a sidebar from that, I too 
have been, uh, you know, I was, I was married. I was part of the, you know, the, my wife gave me an ultimatum like this. She says, uh, if you continue to do what you're going to do and this and that, right, in the church, you're going to lose everything. She says, you're going to lose your marriage. You're going to lose your son. You're going to lose me. You're going to lose all the things that, you know, that we had. And I said, I use the verse, Acts chapter 5, verse 39. If this is truly from God, um, I'm willing to go all in. Like they say in the poker world, right? If you guys ever play poker or anything, know that. When I said I'm all in for God, learning the Bible, learning the practices of God, doing all the things, that's the stance that I took. So each individual person is going to have to make that uh, spiritual choice, uh, uh, personal decision. And that's what I did. And I've been it for the long haul. And I'm, I'm definitely not going to eat my words when it comes back, when it comes to being with God. Uh, and so that's the position that I took. And I know the other gentleman, to not to flip flop or change the gears real quick, but the other gentleman was talking about his wife, and mm -hmm. things, you know. And I believe that everybody is going to have a have one moment where they're going to either I call it the I hope this is not offensive to anybody or anything where it says put up or shut up moment, you know what I mean? When it comes to our faith, and yep. we're all gonna we're all gonna see at the end of the day uh, who kept the laws of God and who didn't. And according to the Book of Malachi. You know, when you look at the last chapter and it says in the last days, you know, we need to turn our hearts to the laws of God and the practices and things of that nature and follow what Jesus uh, did. And he is my the leader, the guider of all the practices. Um, what, what more can I say? Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, it says, go out and teach them and baptize them and uh, tell them to obey all my commands. And According, I believe the gentleman from, I, uh, I guess his name is iPad. Um, you know, I, I don't know what his name is, but yeah, I, Mr. iPad. This is Tim. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Tim. iPad, I like that. <laughs> and that's the only thing that, that I, uh, and nice to meet you, Tim. Uh, that's the only thing how I have come to my own journey uh, for this, uh, this period of time. I believe in the spirit and the bride. I believe in all the practices of Jesus, and I do believe in God the mother. And so... I believe that she is the she is the uh, the savior that has come down in this last day, as you guys probably know the doctrine or whatnot. So uh, that's that was my choice. And uh, did I lose my wife? Yes. Did I lose certain things? Yes. But like many of the apostles in the Old and New Testament, sacrifice had to come, either put up or shut up. You know, what I mean, that's how I see it. So um, sorry so if I took too long. No, that's great. Uh, and again, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts here. And, and I want Kelsey real quick. I want to give you if you have anything you wanted to respond to that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I do. Um, so, so Ray, I'm, I'm truly sorry to hear that about your your uh, marriage and, and the things that you endured. Um, but uh, just to bring it back to um, just to bring it back to my my first question. Just to, and I mean, I understand about the numbers, right? You say it's not about the numbers, but then um, can like, so in regards to, you know, the, tr the, the church is really spreading. Do you mean that in terms of like the number of church, if it's not the number of people, do you mean that in terms of the number of churches or do you mean that in terms of like the word of God, the mother being spread? Um, and by what definition do you mean that the, the church is spreading? No, the message, the message of God is, spread, is, is spreading. And if people believe in biblical prophecy, as you, I'm sure everyone in this room, this platform knows, we should not treat prophecies with contempt, right? So if the prophecies are in the Bible, and if we look at them, however, however each one of these members in this room look at prophecies concerning salvation, concerning uh, word of God, concerning gospel, concerning truth, everyone is going to have to make is going to have to arbitrarily make up their own their own mind. I'm, I'm going to give you a, a point of view how I look at the gospel. When I look at the gospel, I, I even talk to some of the leaders where I'm at. I, I always say the the gospel says that we're saved by baptism. The gospel says the gospel says that if I believe in Jesus, I'll be saved. If the gospel if the gospel says that all you have to do is have faith. So the Bible demonstrates to me that my point of view is there's like eight or nine different ways that the Bible shows that you can be saved. So my, my point of view was like, 
I shouldn't just pick one way, not just like the Mr. iPad, I think he said, Tim, by the practices. I don't just pick Passover to emphasize it just on, on Passover. No, I want to keep everything. I want to keep the laws of God. I want to keep the Passover. I want to believe in the prophecies. So I just take it as a one big, like, a, I call it a big tub of all the, all the practices in the Bible, all the things that are necessary. And Jesus was, is uh, the, the, the main frame of the example that I practice today. And it demonstrates it in the Old Testament and it demonstrates it in the New Testament that this way, how it's presented, how it's uh, correlated in today's time and the biblical prophecies and many different types of ways, this is the true way, the World Mission Study Church of, of God way. And that's what I believe and that's what I practice. So, okay, I, I mean, I, I can I can respect that. Um, but so in regards to the, the message being read throughout the entire world, right? And that's proof that this is, uh, as you said, in using Acts chapter 5, verse 39, that this belongs to God, right? But again, you know, in the day and age where sure. we have so much technology that, sure. you know, stuff goes viral for <laughs> so many reasons, right? We, we have ways to transmit information halfway across the world in literally seconds. Then technically, I mean, it goes back to the Coca-Cola sure. example that uh, technically anything, right, it, by that logic can be, you know, defined as, as something from God. So that's why, I, so I just wanted to understand the, the clarification on it okay. being, because I see that a lot from, yeah, I see that a lot posted online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, law, the, the, the clarification is if we can, if we as believers in the Bible and believing in, in God, if we can start like from step one, right? I, I call it step one. I didn't really know about the difference when I first started many years ago about, about the, the true uh, changing of the day of worship, Sunday, right? Sunday was changed from Saturday Sunday. I didn't know that as a Christian growing up. I didn't know that as a Catholic. I didn't know that period. So then I started learning more about God's laws, how it got changed. And so this types of message, if we can get somebody or, or the message of God, not we, but the message of God can tell somebody in um, like my sheep, listen to my voice. God's voice is the day of worship is Saturday. And that cannot be disputed whatsoever. That's the worship day, the seventh day of the week. That's, that's indisputable. So that message is what I'm telling you. Not us physically, our message. It's not my message. If I can have somebody open their eyes that, sun, that Sunday is not the right day of worship and Saturday is, then the gospel is moving in their hearts and their mind because that's truth. That's 100% solid truth. So but if you... If you preach to somebody that Sabbath day is the correct day of worship, that we should go to church on Saturday. And so if, so if you preach to somebody that message and then they start attending the Seventh-day Adventist church, is the is the gospel still moving in their hearts? Well, again, I, 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 then this particular, go, it starts going, we start going deeper into the blue water, right? If that's what we're going to do, a transition into the a more deeper part of the uh, religious or practices of different other organizations then we can we can definitely do that right well, as you guys know go ahead real quick I, I would just want to pause there for a second and uh jesse or tim that there's kind of a lot said there and i just want to give either of you an opportunity to jump in ask if you want to ask a question um or or make a comment on anything yet jesse can go oh, i was about to, I was about to say i'll let tim run this one okay uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I'll just speak on, I don't really have a lot to say. I don't want to act like I do. Uh, more just, uh, it seems like there's no way of getting around. Like I can tell you're being really respectful, but also it's very strong, very strong. Like Tim um, has blessed me and my family when we've been able to go to one of his Passover feasts and uh, Lord willing, we'll go to another feast coming up soon. But like, um, we're still brothers in the Lord and we might disagree. <laughs> hey, look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. There it so, is. Like, we might disagree on, on things, but like, uh, but yet I find, I find a kinship with Tim and Jesus, the Messiah, like, um, and it seems like it's a little more of a cut and dry issue with the world mission society of like, you don't do this. Somebody had said in the comments, um, you die spiritually and that's the only thing I'm noticing, Tim. You would probably have more to say yeah. on that. Well, I think maybe with that too, as I would ask, because you're kind of talking um, 
uh, Ray about the kind of the core, it, maybe you didn't use this terminology, but kind of the core gospel message. Um, and I, I'm just curious if you believe that the message about mother God is included within what you would view as the core message of the gospel. From, from my, again, I'm not, I'm not a leader. Uh, I'm not, uh, I've been in, in the World Mission Society of Church of God for, for, for quite some time. And according to my understanding of how you how the organizations a way that don't keep the Sabbath day, right? They have a different perspective of God the Mother and Spirit and the Bride in the Bible. And you, I'm sure everybody in this platform reads their Bible. And, and you look at the Old Testament. I'm just gonna brush on that real quick. When you look at the Old Testament. The ones who get to know them know about God, right, are the ones that keep the Sabbath day. So in order to know God, we must keep the Sabbath day. So my understanding, and this is truly what happened on my walk of faith, the more I continue to study about the biblical prophecies, the more I continue to hold God's commands and keep the religious festivals that are in the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, your eyes start getting open to the reality that Yes, even in the Old Testament, it talks about God the Mother. Yes, it talks about all the, the points when we really start breaking them down prophetically uh, it got through the gospel message in the Old Testament and the New Testament, they start matching up with a, um, like a hand in a glove. You okay. know what I mean? That's, that's how it happened for me. I'm not saying that uh, I don't see the, your, the other people probably in this platform. I don't see that how they how they view it. It's just a, it's just like everything. Everybody's gonna have a preference, the Coca Cola or the Pepsi. Well, I don't see it this way. I don't see it that way, right? And so each one of us is in every aspect. I believe in life has a certain perspective. Even my mom says she has five kids. None of my none of my kids they none of them think alike. They all have three. Or, or five different pairs of fingerprints. And so not all of us are alike. And I truly believe that for my walk and my journey and the message that was, was gracefully put before me and I humbly accepted it, yes, the Bible does present the aspect that our heavenly parents exist, God the Father and God the Mother. And if okay. you look at it from a human perspective, the, the biggest thing that I believe most of the people in this platform, I love, my father and my mother, my physical mom and dad. How yeah. can God give me a pair, a pair of parents, right? And not have the same type of love that I would have for God. You know what I mean? So can I, can I say something to that real quick, Ray? Sure you can. So I, I just want to say first is that right, right. And I know we could ask you to provide scriptures uh, to support the doctrine of, of mother God. And, and I know you'd bring scriptures, but I just want to say to that point, which is an argument from analogy. And so correct me if I'm wrong, but, but in essence, I think the argument you're putting forth is that because we see in nature, we see physical father and mother parents. Therefore that must mean that God exists as both father and mother. What, it, is that correct? If I could really show with you, and maybe somebody could hear, help me on this platform, where uh, in the book of Hebrews, where uh, actually, no, it's actually in the, old, in the Old Testament, where I don't have it on me. I don't have my Bible with me right now, but yeah. where, God, where God told Moses to make the tabernacle. When he said that I need for you to make the tabernacle in the same image, in the same dimension, in everything according to right? According to my commands. Yeah. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. This. According to the pattern, the pattern of, of course, the pattern, yeah. the copy right, yep. of what's in heaven. So yep. if there is a tabernacle in the kingdom of heaven that Moses made, right? And we have a father in heaven, right? That we know in the old Testament and the new Testament, why wouldn't there be a God, the mother in the kingdom okay. of heaven? If God gave me a mother here on the earth. Why is so, it? Uh, there, it's only a copy and a shadow. Okay, so let me, I'm just going to give you one quick point to that. And then I see, I think Tim and Jesse are maybe having something to say, maybe not. But um, one, one quick thing I would just challenge you to consider with that is that if you take that line of logic, that line of argumentation, if you follow it to its conclusion, then I could just as, as 
confidently assert that there's also a grandfather and grandmother God and an uncle and an aunt God, because in nature, I don't just have parents. My parents came from somewhere. I don't just have two sets of parents that love me. I have two sets of grandparents that love me. So I could use the same argument and I could say, well, how could God give me in nature two sets of grandparents, but not give me that same love from him? All right. Then uh, I'm sure that everybody in this platform has probably heard, right? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. I mean, how do you see it? What came first, Is it the chicken or the egg? Well, probably the chicken because... God created everything according to us, but you know, yeah, birds have saying. birds have evolved. So who knows? Yeah, we could. That's your point, hair, though. Right? We could we could we could start splitting the hairs a thousand a thousand ways. But I was just saying on the basic level, Jesus came to the earth saying that he's our father, right? And a lot of people couldn't believe it, right? No, no, Jesus never said he was father. He he he, he identified himself as the son of God, not the father. Well, yeah. when he when he spoke to the the Sadducees and the uh, Pharisees and teachers of the law, they just couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't understand him that he and the father are one. So he presented to them in, in a parabolic form because Jesus already said many times, right? The, uh, the knowledge and the, se the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you and not to them. So guess what? They were leading people astray. They were doing all this, blah, 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 you know, and everybody in the platform probably knows what I'm probably talking about, talking about there. Right. So I, I guess with that, I, I haven't really heard really a response to my, my, my encouragement to consider. I mean, I mean, again, cause again, I think, I think if we follow the argument you just gave, then I could, again, I could just as easily can uh, argue for the existence of a grandmother and grandfather God. And so yes, you that's your choice. I, I, and all due respect, Mr. Hatfield, yeah. that's your, you, if you want to use that line of, of, of thinking for towards your salvation, you're more than happy to do yeah. that. And I was just talking on a really b basic level uh, yeah. of what I could be, what could be seen in the, in the book of Genesis, right. About right. Abraham and Sarah, uh, Abraham can be looked at as a representative of God, the father in the Bible. And Sarah can be looked at. She is the mother of many nations. Adam would be considered the second coming of Christ. Right. And wherever Adam is, there is Eve. So, again, that's that's that was what I read. That's what I was presented. That's yeah. What I believe. OK. And if you want to believe in grandparents of that nature. Go ahead. Go right ahead. So, so yeah, my, my point in bringing that up isn't to say that I want to believe that or that I do. In no sense do I believe that there's a grandmother and grandfather. My point in saying that is just to make sure everybody knows that, yes, you presented an argument that in nature we see father and mother. And your argument is that since we see that, therefore, that means there must be a, a, a father and mother God. I'm just making the point that you really, that argument really doesn't work. And at, at, at the end of this, as we're at this point, there's really nothing validating about that argument. It doesn't really prove anything because I could just as easily, again, argue for the, the existence of point, mother and father. Then at what point then do, do we, oh, I would have a question for you, Mr. Hatfield, is do you believe uh, it's scripturally based that there is a tabernacle in heaven that Moses made on earth? Do you think that that, uh, you know, th did that really happen? And is there a tabernacle in heaven that God told Moses to follow? I mean, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, I think that if we go to the uh, passage in Hebrews that you've been referencing, I think, yeah, there's a, there, the pattern that God gave Abraham was based upon a spiritual reality. And so what that is, what that is, I don't know, but I, I guess I don't see how that, how that helps the, the argument for mother God. I'm going to try to be, a, I am going to be as much as respectful, Mr. Hatfield. Yeah. Then if that, if you, as you believe what I believe in the book of Hebrews, then what's the next question? Is it made of, is it made of, 14 karat gold is it made of 10 karat gold is it made of aluminum and then again we just start digging and digging and digging and digging yeah um points points of view uh are 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 kind of say a dime of, a dime a dozen right but I, I again i'm only using the basis of certain scriptures not to make an argument it's it's god's argument and it's us for us each each one of this persons around the world and in this platform to either see it the way God is presenting it or seeing it the way 
the uh, the world uh, of what I call. I'm sorry, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not sorry. I'm going to say this, but just yeah, go. You don't need to be sorry. Doctrines that are that are not true. Am I really yeah. going to believe a doctrine from a Sunday worshiping uh, organization, or am I going to believe or intend to believe the message from a godly, uh, I say, practical, uh, biblical, practical methods? like Sabbath, and I know how the meaning of Sabbath, what it means is getting to recognize God. So again, it, it comes to the conclusion, um, maybe I might be a little vague, or maybe not, you know, uh, in the same area of the thought process, but I could sure get your understanding, Mr. Hatfield. Um, uh, I, I respect yeah. it, but um, my point of view is just that, um, you know, I, I accept that uh, God the Mother exists, and I believe that the Tabernacle was made in copy, and I will continue to maintain the uh, the biblical presentation how I see it. Not in not in a closed method, but in an open mind method also too. I'm hearing all arguments too. Okay, um, well I'm gonna give this to you, Tim, because it looks like you got something to say. And if your cat, like Jesse said, if your cat wants to say anything too, then feel free to give her a platform yeah. to say something. Oh, there she goes. Um, so yeah, I'm, I just wanted to uh, tell Ray and, and everyone that uh, hopefully in the near future, maybe a month or so, I'm going to try to compile as much information as possible about all the all the Old Testament uh, references, kind of like shadow pictures, I guess, of of Jesus as Messiah, but also be able to take a take a close look at Abraham being our father, Isaac being a foreshadowing of. Jesus, or like, as I like to call him, Yeshua, and then Ebenezer, or not Ebenezer, sorry, Eliezer, uh, being a foreshadowing in a sense of the Holy Spirit. Sarah, you could try to make the argument that she is a mother God prototype. I would consider her to be a foreshadowing of Miriam, uh, or Mary, uh, mother of Jesus, as, is, as was Hannah. All sorts of different women in the Bible had, they produced children in a state in which they couldn't produce children. They were barren. Um, Mary was technically not barren, but she was a virgin. So this, there, there's all these foreshadowings of that event and they're not to elevate Mary. I would say, I would just suggest that everything points towards Jesus. Everything is centered around the fact that he was going to come and that he was the big deal. Um, and I'm mm -hmm. going to compile as much information as I can through all these different characters, Samson, Jephthah, all the different judges. I mean, there's, I mean, Joshua, uh, Moses, I'm going to try to compile as much foreshadowing information about Jesus and all the while kind of show like, who is the bride? I think Rebecca mm -hmm. is a wonderful example of the bride. God sends Eliezer. I mean, Abraham sends Eliezer, which means in Hebrew, my God is helper. We know that, Helper um, is the name of the, the spirit. Um, and that's another name for it. And so God sends Eliezer to find the bride for the promised son, Isaac. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things in the Old Testament. It's all very parabolical. And I find it a very much a lack of evidence for someone. If, if there was a mother goddess or mother God or whatever, it would be everywhere. Like Jesus is everywhere. Hmm. And I... Yeah, I think that's a good point. And I know, Tam, we've talked about maybe doing another one. So we'll, we'll, uh, that's something I, I've really wanted to cover is just looking at the testimony of both Old and New Testament and seeing who who does the Bible testify on a consistent basis is God's bride, who is the bride of God, the bride of Christ. And so that's hopefully something we can get to in the future. And with, with that, I, I just one more thing I want to say. Ray. And then Jess, if you have something to say, just, I see you. So raise your hand. I don't want to cut you off, but um, I would just say, Ray, again, I would just challenge you. And I'm sure maybe you've seen the video. I'm sure you're aware of this book, but uh, to me, the fact that I believe I, I would sit here confidently and say, I believe Ong Song Hong would mm -hmm. sit in this conversation and he would agree with me and the views I would take toward the, the scriptures we could pull up right now and, and talk about and go back and forth about whether they're about mother God, for example, Galatians 
4 or Revelation 21, Revelation 22, passages out of these, if we're to look at those and examine them and, and come to our conclusions about what they mean, I would come to the conclusions that would be different than you, obviously. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, you would probably use those as scriptures to to convey the, the, the doctrine, the concept of Mother God. The, what I'm trying to say here is that I believe if Fong Song Hong was sitting here, he would agree with me. And I say that because I think we have irrefutable proof of that in his book, um, the, which, I'm, again, I'm sure you're familiar with, the, the interpretation on the New Jerusalem, uh, the issue of the head covering of brides. There's, there's a couple different names for it, I think. But, but you, you're familiar with the book where he, and I think the significant thing about this book, a lot of people kind of reply by saying, oh, well, he was only writing that for Um Su N and he retracted the book later, which as far as I know, and this would be probably a good question for Kelsey, I don't know that there's really any significant evidence that Ong Song Hong retracted the book or that he pulled it out and said this no, no longer. Okay. I didn't think so, but just wanted to double check. There's, there's, there's no evidence. And, and those I've talked to in the NCPCOG also um, uh, say the same thing. Um, okay. When you see the, the 1983 version of the book, I mean, he makes it pretty clear that this is, you know, in the preface and all throughout the book, that this is an unchanging truth um that you know the idea of a mother god this is his word this is not my words. this is on, on Sang Hong's own words that the idea yep. of a mother god is delusional um and he wasn't just referencing um suin he was talking about uh because in the preface he says specifically um not just um, um suin but any any person that goes and interprets um revelation the same way which the wms uses the same verses to justify that john gil ja is is god the mother as well yes so i i don't know I, hopefully can you guys see yeah. uh yeah, I've got this pulled up. So I have this in a Google Doc. I, I have I've pulled out just specific chapters from the book. But if you see this, Ray, in the preface of the book, this is the quote that we refer to all the time. And you can you can go, you can take the original Korean language book. You can take it to go into a restaurant when we can when we can go in restaurants again. Find some Korean person. Say, hey, can you tell me what this says? And I believe that you're going to come up with a very similar English interpretation. So I'm just saying that to say, I believe you can trust this interpretation. I didn't come up with this. But uh, so in the preface of the book, he says that this is his purpose for the book. Uh, he says it was published to prevent troublemakers who misinterpret and behave fanatically, um, explain the errors in the book that Um Suin published and testify of the unchanging truth of the church of God. So, the significant thing about that, if you're familiar with this book, is that what he does in this book is he'll go through passages like Revelation 21, 1 through 4. He goes to places, uh, Revelation 21, 2 through 3, 9 through 10, 7 through 8. Um, and he also goes to um, Galatians, Galatians 4, which is somewhere. In, yeah, here it is. Galatians which I wanna, 4. Which I want to point out that actually those, when you, when the, when the world mission, when I was a member of the World Mission Society Church of God, I was taught to preach to somebody when I go up to them for the first time is saying, have you heard of God the mother? And then using those exact verses to prove that there's a God the mother in the Bible. So yep. it's really interesting that on he, he explains those same verses in a completely different way than the World Mission Society Church of God teaches. Yes. Exactly. And so that's that's kind of my point here is just that I believe, again, if we were to sit here with Ong Song Hong, if he was alive today, I believe he would look at these verses and, and not just I believe it, but I can see his own. I can look at what he thought about Galatians 4. And we see that when he interpreted it, he said, uh, and, and you can see these, look at this phrase here. He said, the only reason the Apostle Paul wrote Galatians 4, 22 through 26, the only reason is to clarify that the history of the family of Abraham is a prophecy. And what is that prophecy according to Ong Song Hong? He says, this is a prophecy of the old and the new covenant. Okay, the significant thing about that again is that's what I believe. That's what I think he's pointing to. That's what I think Paul was alluding to in Galatians. But nowhere in here does he insinuate or even leave any room for the doctrine of mother God. And he doesn't just do this with Galatians four. He does it with revelation again, revelation 21, 22. Um, and so I say all that, not, not as a way to attack and belittle you as we say all the time. I'm just saying this as an encouragement that to me, I, I don't know how you as a member who believe that Ong Song Hong is God can place so much confidence and faith 
and a belief in Mother God and a worship for for this woman in Korea who Ong Song Hong himself, we can see doctrinally, he would not have believed in and he would have utterly rejected. You, does that, uh, does that make want, sense? You want me to, is, are, you, are you asking me to, to comment on what you just said? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, if you want to, you don't have to. If you, I mean, feel free if you want to, if you want to think about that and mull over it and get back to us. And I mean, that's fine too. We don't want to put pressure on you or anything. We just, I'm just putting this before before people. Not again, not as intact, but just as an honest uh, from the outside looking in. If you want to convince me to join this group, and you're telling me one of the core things about this group is the belief in Mother God, and I'm looking at the person you believe is Father refuting that same doctrine. To me it's really hard to know how you guys feel you have much ground to stand on to invite people into your group, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that is, uh, I guess that would probably be the viewpoint of everybody on this platform. Uh, I, I, would, I would probably agree that that's uh, what you just discussed and presented. All I can tell you from my, my understanding and my perspective is that I have made a choice. Uh, I have made a choice to follow the commands of God from the Old Testament to the New Testament as much as I, my aptitude can. Yep. Uh, I see your points of view, and I am an, I am going to leave my selection up to the judgment when. I, I get there. When I get to the judgment, me personally, this not, doesn't go for everybody else. This goes for me is that when I go to the judgment, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be judged according to the scriptures, according to Revelations uh, 20, 2012, right? And the books were open. And if I did wrong and if I didn't do what, uh, if I didn't pick the right doctrine or the right practices or the right books to read, and I'm I'm going to be condemned, and but to this point, on this particular date, uh, I really know that on April the 14th, 2012, uh, I believe with all my reverence and all my heart and all my soul and everything that it, I believe that it takes to be to be a believer, is that I believe what An Sang Hong is God and Heavenly Mother exists. And I believe that we can probably, a lot of people are going to have to make their own, their own decision, like everybody yep. in this platform, to believe, yep. the, believe the book or don't believe. Believe right. about the mother or don't believe. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of, that will be the only, uh, not the, it sounds like maybe like a cop out. Somebody will probably be thinking that it's not detailed enough uh, yep. or it's not, uh, you know, enough feedback. But that's my, my understanding at the, at the time. And um, we'll continue to do what I do, and I, everybody else will continue to do. But at the end of the day, I I just can't. Uh, um, I'm not boneheaded or anything like that. I I see the I see what I see, and other people can cannot see what they cannot see. And yeah. there'll be there'll be arguments till till the last day. I think you would. You would uh, believe that, Mr. Hatfield. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely agree. I just want to say, Jesse. like, well, just again, just uh, thank you for, Ray, for your humility. And I think you came on here and represented very well, like you did. You yep, did very definitely. Well. And um, so thank you for that. And then um, somebody had said in the chat, and I just, I do encourage this. Um, somebody said in the chat, just a, a challenge to read the New Testament by yourself. And you may already do that. Um, but I just, what comes to mind is Peter saying, where else would we go, you know, to the Lord, like you have the words of life. And so, yeah, I'll just be, I will be praying for you. I can already tell people in the chat are praying for you and uh, we honor you. You say, this is what you've chosen and we can't force you to do anything, but uh, yeah, just would encourage, um, yeah, a reading of his words um, and, and the best you could do without um, any presupposed ideas, which is yeah. hard for us, I know. So Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, can I can I can I have an opportunity to speak to Mr. Ray? Yes, go for it. Yeah, please uh, do. Ray has a moral obligation that he should comment on the uh, book what On Sang Hung written on uh, mother, because 
as the church is rapidly expanding all over the world to every nook and corner of the world uh they should be responsible they are responsible in position to answer and clarify every doubt and he cannot escape like that in a silly way why because in 2016 their uh, notion is to preach to 7 billion people again the very mother who gave the notion to preach to 7 billion people changed her uh, uh notion just to preach 1 billion people it's finished it will be finished in 2019 we are packing our bags and we are going to heaven and uh, you are preaching to this many billion people and uh, world mission society church of god has an obligation to clarify all the doubts and uh, mm. as you are expanding rapidly uh, in what means you are expanding see uh, there is a famous saying by gandhi ji uh, not only in means are also important of course you are expanding in india also you are expanding to every village every town every city but uh, in what ways are you expanding with uh, mass mobilization or in a secretive way are you following a amway model of uh, uh, recruiting members or something like uh, uh, a national movement for bible or what is the early reformers like martin luther did what are the means you are following to expand your church i have a question to mr ray and uh, every time you compare jesus christ uh, what has happened to jesus christ 2000 years ago this is also happening to us now uh, every time you go with comparison with uh, 2000 years ago right uh, as jesus christ has always uh, had a mass gatherings uh, when did world mission society church of god has mass gatherings when uh, <clears throat> anywhere they uh, opened an auditorium for 3000 to 4000 people and they, did they preach about mother god or anything else and uh, mr ray do you follow the principle of i for i or uh, forgiveness i i i did i hear i did he say i for an i is that what, is uh, that what lastly, i heard lastly lastly i want to ask you what is the principle you follow an i for i or forgiveness oh An I, eye I, for an eye. Do you follow an eye for an eye or forgiveness? Which principle? I follow what the. I mean, <laughs> pr- principle on eye for an eye. I, I, I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not digesting what what he's. Is he saying my my yeah. religious practices? Uh, no. On eye for an eye. I don't. I don't have a. Eye for an practice. eye refers to eye for an eye refers to uh, Old Testament. Forgiveness refers to New Testament. What yes. what model do you follow? I I follow the model of as a, as a brother I I was in the church same church for eight years. I am asking you. Uh, okay, I I think maybe he's maybe uh, facading here. Uh, am I gonna condemn or am I gonna contend somebody or have mercy on them? That's not that. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna accuse anybody of going to. Hades or anything like that. I think that's kind of uh, like a masquerade type of question here. I'm I'm not I'm not here to do that. Or I'm not here to condemn anybody. Uh, all I wanted to do is participate, and I'm not evading anything. His question, but I just want to follow the practices and the teachings that from the old covenant to the new covenant, and the teachings of God the Father, God the Mother, and my church, World Mission Society Church of God. Okay. I, I'm not here, I'm not here to condemn anybody or anything. Yeah, I think uh, one thing maybe I pull out of what uh, Ebenezer said, and, and maybe w- just focus on this one thing. Um, and and Ray, I don't, you know, if you if you feel you want to jump off, don't feel com- like you have to to stay on here. I know you kind of sound like you're maybe trying to close up. If you could stay as long as you want, though, but um, I do think, um, as he suggested, the WMSCOG does have, and I would think you as a member have somewhat of a responsibility to have an answer, a good logical reasonable answer for the question i presented about ong song hong's book and i would i would say even further than that just out of a love and respect and and care about you i would say i think you owe it to yourself to even go away from this conversation and look into that book and and you i think your answer to my challenge with with ong song hong's book was simply to say that you're devoted to this you're all in and i would just say 
there's a lot of people. Well, I, I guess I just go with the Proverbs. There, there's a there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it is death. And so obviously that could be the case for all of us, because like you like you're saying, we all have different opinions about things in some measure. But I think this is a, this is a big deal because the difference between you and me is a is a huge gigantic chasm as far as what we believe, because you are we're we, we're worshiping entirely different deities uh there's really the i have uh i i would need to be careful with saying this but i, I think i could say i have a, a plethora or, or an infinite amount more in in common with the mormon or the jehovah's witness even than i do with wmscog members and i have great issues with mormonism and jehovah's witnesses but the chasm between me uh, i think uh true Christianity, what I would say, and the WMSCOG doctrine, it's a great chasm. And I think what makes that chasm so big, uh, in large part, is owed to this doctrine of Mother God. I think what separates me and you so much is that you are are literally worshiping and giving your allegiance to a Korean woman. I say, and again, I'm saying this with respect, but you're giving your allegiance to a Korean woman who doesn't know your name. She doesn't know you exist unless you've met her before. Um, if you go to meet her in Korea, you're going to have to wear a name tag. So she even knows who you are. And, and if you're a member and you're following the WMSCOG doctrine, then you're praying to this woman. You are, you are in her, you're, you're making supplications to this woman in prayer and she doesn't know your name. And so, and so those things, along with the fact that Ong Song Hong wrote this book where this, this, this Korean man who you believe as God himself does not believe the things that you believe about this Korean woman. And so I think all that, I'm not, again, I'm not saying this to, to say that you need to have an answer now. I'm saying I think you owe it to yourself to go away from this conversation and to do as so many members are doing right now as they're watching these videos and coming across different different articles on the internet it's making them think about things that they haven't thought about before and i i get it i get that you're committed to this i get that you're all in i i think there's there's an honorable thing about that but i think we can we can be honorable and being fully devoted to a cause that at its core is a lie and, and so, I, again, I think you owe it to yourself to really think and ask yourself and, and examine the evidence and, and consider, is this something that is this really the right way, the right thing to fully devote myself to? I would say devote yourself fully to God. That's great. That's do that. Name, yeah, go ahead. Because you, you just said it was a lie. And, and since you you brought out the book and since you talked about the you're talking about the practices in, in my faith and what I believe in the deities and you just spit off like 12 things. Yep. Uh, of, of, a, of a whole like a laundry, laundry list of things. But you yes, but thing. I'm sorry for that. But lie. yeah, you said you said the word lie. Are you okay. saying I, I'm, I'm going to split both of those things in half r r r real fast? Yeah. Are you are you categorizing that the practices that I we in this meeting today in this platform today the sabbath the passover and all the biblical things that i practice are you saying that's a lie too just as no that's day? not that's oh. not at all my point i i i don't as far as i remember i don't think i've even mentioned passover or sabbath at this point i no, that's I not my what, what i'm talking about here specifically is this idea of mother god i, I mean that's really at the core of it that's that's what's sure. one of the primary issues in my mind why i continue okay. to make these videos is because of that the, the, the reason why i say that because i believe just my understanding here respectfully is that you're jumbling everything of the practice of like what we're doing as far as biblical is concerned and making a, a overall assessment of everything and you put the title as a lie without even going in in super depth hmm. you know you, you can't judge the book by its cover like the old saying goes right yeah until you until you grab the whole scope of everything in a one big you can, it can't happen overnight or in two days or two weeks or 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 even two hours yeah you know what i mean so when i when i talk about it like that i believe with all my heart all my soul like you had said that's my that's what i'm practicing but People are cookie, cookie cuttering what what we're doing because they don't agree with God the Mother and throwing all of our practices to the side. Maybe okay, like that's not 
right. That's not right. But the way I came to know God the Father and God the Mother is by continuing to practice the biblical teaching and the biblical application. And with that understanding, it, it came more and more and more and more understanding about God the Father, God the Mother. So without me practicing and knowing God on the basic level in the Old Testament, right, and understanding why the Christ had to be alive, why, why uh, the Christ was from the Old Testament to the New Testament, I would have never even came close to understanding about God the Father, God the Mother. And even in general, the general practice of which I believe most of the people here on this platform do Sunday service, right, that those, these I, th I think you might be surprised by no, that. Yeah, I think I don't, you might be very I, surprised I, by that, Ray. I, I, from my videos, I've had a lot of comments of people saying that, um, oh, I go to keep Sunday service, that I keep Easter, that I keep all these, you know, things that the WMS COG um, denounces. Um, but I actually don't. Um, so just because I don't attend the WMS, I mean, I, I attend Sunday service. Like I, absolutely. I, I don't. I just want to yeah, make that point because okay. I've had that a lot. I've had that comment come up a lot. But so, Ray, let me let me stop you there, but just just because I don't want to miss some of the things you said, I just and Tim, I, it looks like you're maybe gearing up. If you are, I want to give you an opportunity to say something. Um, uh, I, I just want to say that it's not my intention, nor was it my purpose, to whitewash the whole thing and throw everything in the WMSCOG out. That and and I don't, as far as I can remember, in this conversation, I don't know what I've said that has communicated that. And if I have. I accept that challenge, and I'm I'm sorry for communicating that. That was not my intention. My oh, focus yeah. right my focus right now, all the the thing I'm pinpointing, laser focused on that I would and just presenting to you and challenging you with is the, simply this doctrine of Mother God and the fact that who you believe is your father, who is God, denied her existence. Um, that that's that's all. That's if I said something's a lie, that's what I'm saying is a lie. I, I'll stand here boldly unashamedly and say that it's a lie that this this that Zongil jaw is god I, I i have no problem saying that and so that's my challenge and i want to give you a moment to reply but i want to give tim a second if you have something to say to that tim oh hold on one second let me unmute no. you sorry go go again uh, yeah i i was just gonna kind of clarify because he was um just saying that kind of bundling together the um, the idea of keeping commands and the mother God thing. And you were specifically talking about the mother God thing. So I was going to, I was going to clarify that. Um, but also I've, I, I want to, I guess, uh, speak to Ray in a sense of about finding a way to maybe separate that in your mind where, where you have, mm. um, where you're able to look at these commands and, and keeping the festivals and feasts and things and, and maybe find a way to separate that in your mind because they, they aren't um, mutually exclusive or they're, they're not tied together in, in some kind of way. Um, you can have, you can still do those things and question um, the mother God doctrine and the, the Aung San Gan was the second coming of Christ doctrine. Those things mm -hmm. are not, you can find a lot of, I, you and me would agree on a lot of things with Passover and Sabbath and finding all the different scriptures and the, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. There's a, there's a lot of evidence to that kind of stuff. There's a lack of evidence for the mother God thing. So if, you, if you're able to separate in your mind, I, I hope and pray that there can be sort of a split in your mind for those two topics. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I have uh, a question. I'll, I'll oh, sorry. sorry. Well, let's, Ebenezer, let's let him reply because kind of a lot's been said to him at this point. I'd like him to not get too confused so let's go, go ahead ray reply to that and yeah um i <laughs> the the we um the way it sounds like we would definitely uh, agree right on many of the uh, many of the biblical practices but again this is uh, uh this goes this goes back to the bible the, the disciples did all the practices that the jews did right but they just couldn't accept that they couldn't accept Jesus was God. They couldn't. So uh, there's going to be the people who believe in unsung home and God, the mother, and they're putting aside the practices of the Bible, right? Keeping the Sabbath day Passover that can be, be, be looked at. As you know, even in, uh, in the new Testament, there, there, w there was no actual book where the disciples went out to preach. 
about Jesus, right? They only say, look at, look at, look at this. This is referencing to Jesus. You got to believe in Jesus, even though Jesus is not written in the Old Testament. So as the name Jesus is not written in the Old Testament, how do you think the disciples went out and, uh, you know, they increased the church that many members became to uh, many new members or uh, people that living at that time frame, they became to believe in the testimony by voice about Jesus. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think so, Tim, uh, Mr. iPad. Uh, yes, I, w I would agree with you that uh, that particular point of view w uh, works also, that they're not all inclusive, but I have decided to include them in my in my spiritual walk and in my uh, religious applications that I do weekly, yearly, and currently believe. And I, I, I'm not, I, I guess I'm going to repeat myself. Everybody's going to, everybody's going to pick and choose. And uh, that's what I, that's what I've chose. Yeah. And I, I, I would, I think again, I just say to it is that we should, we owe it to ourselves to pick and choose based upon, evidence. And I think you mentioned that Jesus went around and people believed, some believed in him, some didn't, but Jesus was constantly calling attention to the evidence that the miracles he was doing. And if you see in the beginning chapters of Acts, it talks about how God is going to judge the world through Jesus. And it says he's attested to this fact. He's proven this fact by raising Christ from the dead. And so I believe that the biblical, biblical faith is a kind of faith that doesn't require us to throw uh, metaphorically speaking, our brains in the trash in order to believe it and to say, well, I'm just going to jump blindly. I'm just going to give myself to this. I think Jesus in the gospels, and we see the pattern of the new Testament. If you look at places like first Corinthians 15, God wants us to examine the evidence. The Bereans and acts were commended because they heard the message of the gospel and they went away to see if these things were true. And so Again, I think in, in this conversation, again, I say this with respect, as of yet, I don't feel you've given any evidence that supports your claim. And so with that, I, I have a question for you from the comments here in Zoom that I, I'm going to ask, and I want to I give you the opportunity to respond to this. The question for you, Ray, is um, can you ask uh, what, what sets Ong Song Hong apart so that you know that he is God? Uh, and not just another sinful human being. And I think we could put Zonggil Jaw in there as well. That what, what about, because you, again, you're, you're talking about how you're giving yourself to this thing, you're all in, but what is it about Ong Song Hong and Zonggil Jaw specifically that makes, that convinces you that they are worthy of your worship? Um, so go ahead. Uh, you're asking, you're asking me the, the, I guess it sounds like a very, very precise and pinpoint why I have decided to uh, accept An Sang Hong and uh, God the Mother. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess more, more even on a personal level, I think would be good. Like if you don't, I, I would just wonder. Like today, you sitting in this conversation, what is it in your heart that is compelling you to continue to say to us that you're all in? You're all in with, with Zong Gil Ja. You're all in with Ong Song Hong. Like I, at the end of the day, I would say, why? Um, Cause me personally, as a believer in Jesus, uh, it, like I don't believe that following Jesus in this day and age is necessarily an easy task. Um, there's things that come against faith. And so I have to ask myself on a regular basis, like why, why am I doing this? Why am I living this way? Like what, is this really worth it? Like, do I really believe Jesus is who he says he is? I have to go back and examine the evidence. And if I don't find the evidence that he is who he says he is, then I, I'll tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to walk away because I'm not going to believe in something that doesn't have evidence. And Paul, and if you look at first Corinthians 15, he actually communicates that same thing. He says, if Christ didn't raise from the dead, if there's not evidence for that, he says, then our faith is futile. This is, this is purposeless. It's, it's in vain. And so I guess I'm coming to you from a personal place of saying, I personally, as a person of faith who believes in God, who believes in Jesus Christ as Messiah, I have to regularly reconsider as I'm facing challenges to faith, facing different temptations, facing different pressures. I have to regularly ask myself, why am I doing this? Why am I following this Jewish man from 2000 years ago? Like, is this really true? Is this really real? 
And I go and I, what I do is I examine the evidence. I examine different and different varieties of evidence. I just look at the character of Jesus, who he is. And there's something compelling about that. I look at the evidence of the resurrection and different things like that, that reconfirm and make me can reconvince me over and over that. Yes, this is, this is what I want to give my life to. I'm all in with Jesus because I believe he's given convincing proof that I should be all in with him. So that's a, that's a long winded way of me saying, I'm wondering for you, what what is it that's driving you to do the same thing for this Korean man who's dead, who's died decades ago, and this Korean woman who, again, I'm, I'm saying this not in, out of disrespect, but I'm fully convinced she's going to be dead in, in the next 10 through 20 years max. And so I'm just wondering, why is it that you would stand here today and give your whole life in devotion to these two people? And, and just real quick to tag on to that is is – to not only devote your whole life to at least John Gil Ja, but especially when there's no proof that An Sang Hong ever announced her as a god the mother. I'd like hmm. to tag that on. With yeah, that. that's good. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Well, as the Bible says, uh, people, people, people live by faith. And my faith walk has, to this point in time, the evidence that I've seen, and it goes totally contrary to probably to everybody in this chat room, the evidence that I see proves enough to me to continue the walk every day. Um, and that, that was pretty what, much. What is that evidence? What is, what, what is that evidence though about Jong that, um, that you've seen that has, um, that mm -hmm. you have put your faith in her? Yeah. I think that's what we're asking is not, we, we understand that you believe there's evidence. We're just asking specifically what right now in your mind, as you think you're grabbing onto evidence that reconfirms, yes, this is true. What, what is it? Can you pull that out of your mind and give that to us? Share with us, what is the evidence that's convinced you that, yes, Ong Song Hong is God. Yes, Dong Gil Ja is, is also God. Okay. I'll, I'll start with, uh, I'll, I'll leave the, the Ong Song Hong uh, to the best of my abilities, to mess my understanding, to, to attempt through my walk, my religious walk every day, is that I know that the second coming of Christ is coming. Okay? So when I start looking at the second coming of Christ coming, because that's what I learned in the Catholic Church, that's what I learned of going to many different other, uh, or hearing other doctrines of, you know, of Christian faith, the great glories uh, out here on the West Coast, if any of you guys are from the West Coast, um, I, I heard Billy Graham's message. I, I heard a, a, a lot of them, right? Before yeah. I went into the church of God. So hearing the message that Jesus is coming and we should be prepared and all this other kind of good stuff, I had no idea what that meant. But God Almighty on some home, he brought the message to me to understand how he's going to come when he's going to come and in the manner and the fashion that he's going to come towards me again this is just not like i can't explain it to you in in a in a two minute or one minute little response but if you're you want to get really really minute and really uh dead point centered i'm just going to give you an overview of i i'm looking for the christ and so when i'm looking for the christ i had no idea what that meant and somebody from the Church of God presented himself. This is the manner how we should expect the Christ to come. This is the method that the Bible talks about that he's going to come. And the person that comes and brings the message, this type of message, he is God Almighty. It doesn't matter what he looks like. It doesn't matter where he comes from. It doesn't matter what, he did, what people think is what can be proven in the Bible. And if we're going to get into the really hard center points of, why I believe in this or what the smoking gun that you maybe everybody in this platform is looking at that one little silver bullet. It, it cannot be told in one silver bullet and or one smoking gun. This we'd be sitting here for months and, and years probably for that for me to kindly explain it to you. But no, I think that's why I go but, yeah, but go ahead, Ray. Kelsey. Uh, really quick, um, I, I understand. There's probably like, at least for An Sang Hong, there's probably like a bunch of reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Why, why, why you believe he is uh, second coming Christ? Because I know when I was in the church, there was a bunch of reasons too. But can you name just one piece of evidence? Just because we don't, you know, there's there's not a lot of time. But if, can you name just one piece of evidence where An Sang Hong named 
John Gil Ja is God the mother. In the Bible? Uh, no. Well, I mean, where did he make note of it? Did he make note of it in a book? Did he make note of it um, in an audio sermon? Where is something that you could point us to, to help us the understand? 66 the 66 books. Re but, uh, but, what, but what member... book, but what specific book of An Sang Hong's dimension? Because I know you're talking about the Bible, right? But Absolutely. like, I, I know, but I know that's, that's what the, the church says, but like, where is the proof that he made any note from the, well, no, 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 no. Let, let me finish really quick. Sorry. Um, so, but where's the proof that he wrote down any verses from the Bible saying directly that because of these verses from the Bible, that is why John Gilja is God. Okay. Just one, just, You're... just one piece of proof. Cause I know we don't have a lot of time. I mean, the way it's presented, the way I received the message when I came first came in, I stick to the 66 books. And when you start seeing the 66 books in a parabolic form, as you know, Miss, I, what, I, I, I don't mean to call you Miss, but I'm sorry. Oh, if no, I don't it's know okay. Your, it's okay. Yeah. I, I know you don't. Yeah, it's fine. I, I don't know your name. You've heard probably the same message that I have. And right. that's what you, that I, I've seen enough evidence in the 66 books to support the, the all the books that Aung San Hong and the church has put forth and I, I have and I read, um, they're, they're enhancers to what I saw in the, Bi in the Bible. Are but you where looking, did Aung say you're it looking though? For the smoking, you're, you're looking for the smoking gun, right? That's what you're looking for. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Actually, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because the WMS has a study called um, Heavenly Wedding Banquet where they teach that it's second coming Christ on Song Hong who will reveal to us who is God the mother. That's what the, the church teaches. So that's right. why if that's the case, right, and that's an active study that's being taught, then where is there any kind of documentation um, anywhere, even just one piece where An said, okay, John Gilja, she is God the mother, according to this particular study that the WMS teaches. You, so you want, you want evidence from that particular sermon? I want, I want basically, again, sure. my, my main point is I want evidence. People, the rest of the people on the platform probably don't even know what you're talking about really too much. Maybe I would guess. And so if you want a smoking gun from that particular uh, um, I want I just want an example, regardless where it comes from, I just want one example of where An Sang Hong said, John Gil Josh, she is God the mother. That's 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 all I'm asking for. Sure. Just one example. Uh, you know what? It's been a lot. Uh, this uh, may not be adequate uh, for you, uh, Miss, uh, but it's been a long time since I've done that uh, that sermon, the heavenly wedding banquet. All right, but I get the I get the gist of it. I I I understand I, I understand that subject. But right now I, I don't have I don't have all I don't have all the verses down. I, I don't I don't I'd have to review that particular study, uh, you know. And maybe maybe uh, maybe on the next maybe on the next time I, I'll I'll give a, a more more precise yeah uh, That's precise fine. That's answer. Fine. Maybe if you can wait for the next time and you know yeah, I can uh, wait. I'll, I can I'll leave wait. it at that. Is that is that enough for you? <laughs> That's yeah, fine. No, no, no. That's, that's totally fine. Just, I was just curious if you had that ready, but you know, if it, totally fine, totally fine. Yeah, I, I, I haven't, I haven't, as you know, I haven't finished the fifty sermons. I haven't, um, and uh, you know, I, I've been in it for a while, but I, I'm, I'm not that studious in all the sermons. Um, I, I'm, I come in, I came in not knowing the Bible or anything before I, I went, I uh, came into the Church of God. Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna put up my collar that I know everything now. Not not, not one bit. Not not at all. Um, but I every day I, I want to learn. Every every day I want to see. Every day I want to absorb. And I I really hope that you know for for my for my case my religious walk continues. And I I really want to I really want to continue to delve into remembering the verses and knowing how to respond. And I just wanted to say before I, I'm probably gonna have to check out Mr. Hatfield. Uh, is that yep. I joined I joined your platform this afternoon, uh, or I, you allow me to join also. I, I wanted to join your platform. Is um, I, my my point of view is that like this: if we're gonna have a debate, uh, I went to college. I was part of the debate team in high school and things of that nature. But if we're gonna have a debate. Uh, that's that's fine to have have a debate, but I'm I'm not really in it to having much of debate. 
But yeah. what I really am is that some of us come to some sort of understanding clarity and we're still on the same on the same mission is that the way the reason why we talk about God is that we want to go to heaven. Um, I want I want to seek and save the lost children. And I think that your message and whatever work that you do or whatever church that all you guys, all you brothers and sisters in this platform uh, want to seek and save the lost and bring everybody into the spiritual arc and go to heaven. And that's always been my, my desire, my want. And I want to go to heaven with my physical family and everybody else. And if this benefits or hinders it, uh, anybody or anything, then I'm here because it's God's will. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I found, I found your, I found your message, uh, on the internet, but I'm, I'm really glad that I, that I came in here today to, uh, talk and I'm sorry, young lady, that I don't have the specific smoking gun that I have. I'm not going to go, uh, run to my deacon or somebody. Hey, I need to answer what, how can I respond to this? But I will, I will prepare the message and digest it again, how it sits with me, not, not, and the way the, the sermon digests spiritually inside of me and i will have an answer for you miss i, I don't i'm sorry i don't know your name oh, uh, okay. kelsey kelsey uh kelsey i'm sorry uh no kelsey it's it's I, doctor I, I, it's dr kelsey right oh uh, no <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> doctor <laughs> please uh but gentlemen i will have to vacate i have to i have to uh um get ready for my for my service tonight and uh i hope that you guys uh, uh enjoy the rest of your evening wherever part of the country you guys are at well thanks ray again thank you so much for joining us here and we appreciate you talking and i'm uh yeah again can't tell you enough how much we appreciate your respectful mm -hmm. demeanor um and so we, yeah feel, i i also just want to say i respect your your willingness to just say in some form, I don't know the answer to that question and I'll go away and look. And that's kind of something I think me in the past, me and Jesse have encouraged members to do. And we try to do that ourselves, not just to pretend like we got all the answers, but to be but can I honest say one more and thing? Can I say one go more for thing it. About also, the, I, I guess it would be say in the reverse for a lot of people in this particular platform. Um, if, I, if I'm going to have I won't say have to respond, right? I'm here willingly, uh, able to engage. Uh, a, lo a lot of these people in, the, in this room should, really, I, I believe just my, my understanding, my, my comment is that through the, the biblical practices that this group probably does as Christian and the Christian faith and the Christian walk, um, uh, you talked about a little, uh, Mr. Hatfield, about biblical, uh, biblical faith. Uh, a yeah. few seconds ago, like five minutes ago, yeah. there is a difference. There is a difference between traditional faith and biblical faith, and I would really push that to uh, to my brothers and sisters uh, in this platform to really evaluate what type of faith do I, do. I, if I'm going to have to put forward uh, the best answer that I could for my spiritual walk, and I believe all the brothers and sisters in this platform should really evaluate their uh, what practices they're doing as far as Sunday worship, Easter, and all these other pagan holidays that uh, most of the churches practice. Because on Sunday, I saw a lot of people with, you know, with uh, some paraphernalia that's not biblical and things of that nature. And even the day is not, it's not a biblical day. So if I'm going to, uh, next time I come on here, if I'm allowed to come on here, with all due respect, of course. is that we should put up some some points to say, hey, if I'm going to put up and shut up, then so be, so be it. Also, too, we're going to come up with other other topics that we're going to bring to the table, uh, and I'm going to give the best internal response that I can because of what I believe, and I think that's why everybody's here and what they could prove, right? Then other people are going to have also too. They're going to be put on the spot to answer, yeah. not with vengeance or anything like that. I'm not doing that, but. People are picking the book apart. People are picking, uh, uh, they don't believe in God the Mother, this particular chapter, this paragraph, and this thing. But I'm also going to come, uh, you know, prepared next time. At least I know what type of platform, and not with an, a, a vengeance type of attitude, but with a, with a response that, uh, that is biblical and open-hearted open, open -hearted and open-minded to. Yeah. yeah, and I think, I honestly, if you were up for it, Ray, and it sounds like you are, um, 
I think there really would be a cool way and everybody would love it to do some kind of, whether it's Zoom or whether it's actually just you and Jordan or two of you, two of us, like some kind of not debate aggressive, but where, yeah, there's fair time allotted to ask each other questions, answer. Like, I really think that'd be super beneficial for everybody. I, yeah. I think that's what that. the, the whole Christian walk is all about because you heard about Jesus. I heard about it. We weren't there when it happened and everything can be quote unquote verified in the Bible, blah, 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 blah. But when it comes down to what I practice, even through my own physical family, well, why do you do that? You know, everybody's doing this and everybody's doing that. And why don't you just go with the flow and this and that? And yeah. so it, it, it only enhances more that what the heck? I, I'm not just the type of person that just goes with the flow. I better have it right. And if I don't have it right, I'm in big problem. I'm a big, yeah, I'm in I big trouble. Yeah. Yep, and I, definitely. I was part of the Navy. I was in the Navy. I, I had... Uh, I had a high security clearance, and we just didn't, we don't operate like that. We, uh, I was in the, in the, uh, what do you call it? In 1991, in the Gulf War, we, we just don't take orders like that. We either follow, follow what's instructed, follow the orders that were given, and do it to the best of our abilities, or you're going to be out of here. And so I take kind of the same approach of my religious walk. Can I prove everything? Can I give every dot, you know, cross every T and dot every I? No, but you best believe that I've I've evaluated I've I've uh, I've read what I read and I've seen what I've seen and I'm a really firm believer of this statement what what God says in the Bible my sheep will listen to my voice some people uh, some people are just not gonna get it I, I'm I, I'm 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 in accordance with that just like even Moses on, on Mount Sinai right did you hear the thunder right? some people say the thunder but somebody said they heard the voice of God so. Is that still happening today? I really truly believe that is. Our message is being preached throughout the whole world. Some people are going to believe it, some ain't. Some are going to try to tear it down. Let it, let it, let it be done. It's been happening. So, point in, yep. point in case, uh, I just want to say at the end that I, uh, I hope to be on this platform once again, and uh, maybe, maybe we can just have a, a little bit of, a, I call it the chewing the cut uh, spiritually. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, yeah, Ray, thanks for going and we won't hold you up. Uh, we appreciate you being here and would definitely invite you in to come back anytime. Um, and uh, Ray, would you, would you do me a favor and maybe email me at, uh, do you know my email address? I don't know how familiar you are with our channel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in the comments here. It's just WMSCOG at greatlightstudios.com. And uh, just email me so I can... I, I emailed somebody on the chat here. Somebody asked me, "Can you can you do something here?" And I and I said, "Can we contact you?" And I, I gave him my email, so I don't know who that was on this platform right now. Okay, um, I don't know either. It wasn't me. Okay, <laughs> so I somebody's got. Okay, well, I just put my email, and so if you would do me a favor and email me, just so that it went if and when we do another one of these. Um, I can let you know, and we can maybe set up some more specific topics that we'll cover, so you're not caught off guard. Um, no, it wasn't a matter of caught off guard, but I really appreciate the, the offer. And um, I, I, I'm, I, I guess I, I don't call it being off guard. No matter how many points I, I bring up, it's still, it's going to be like I call it the trap door. I get it. I, I, I understand it. You know, what I mean, it's, it's going to be always a, the trap door for me. But I'm 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 okay with it. But anyways, uh, I, I put on here I'm I'm not I'm I'm new to Zoom, so to speak, kind of. Yeah. Uh, I put chat. I put chat, and then if there if I put my email address, does that go to you as the, the room leader? As you the, can do uh, it. You should be able to do it privately. Privately. Right? Yes. Like do Jordan, so then everybody won't see it. Yeah. Do you okay. see? It? There's there's a little blue drop down menu, and you can just select. Um, you can select my name so then everybody else won't see it if, if you would rather do it that way. What is, what is, uh, you're in a hat field, right? I pick on, uh, oh, send to Jordan Hatfield. Okay. I, I think, let me know if you get this. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I'm sending it now here. I'm just finishing it up. Sorry about picking up your, your, uh, your chat here. That's okay. Uh, this so is all part of the plan. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I send it to you. Did you get it, sir? I got it. Yep. Thanks. Hey, Thanks, good? man. I got it. Uh, 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 everybody have a good evening. It was, a, it was a pleasure to be in your group, and you guys have a, a good rest of your night. Bye now. You too.
Thanks, Ray. Yeah, Mr. Jordan, I do want to leave this uh, meeting. Say again. Yeah, I do want to leave this meeting, but uh, before I... Uh, okay, I leave, yeah. I, I want to share something. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, see, the Old Testament law teaches about an eye for eye, a tooth for tooth. But uh, what New Testament, what Jesus Christ believes is every sinner has a past. Every sinner has a future. Every saint has a past. Can you hear me? Yep, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, Old Testament law is retributive and uh, New Testament law is reformative. New Testament deals with love, kindness, forgiveness and everything. See, if you bring rituals, more and more rituals makes people divided. Love makes people united. Yep. Are you getting what I'm saying? Somewhat. Love, love unites yeah. and hate divides. No, no. Rituals. 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 Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, I can get down the, with that. Yeah. Yeah. They do it. Actually, if you see, what is the basic, basic doctrine of the Christianity? It's all about love, right? It's love, all about love. It's all about having a pure heart. Yeah. See? Yes. We, if you read the, uh, just, uh, I, I wonder if there, is, if there is a man like Jesus Christ walked on this earth because uh, all his examples are like uh, uh, about forgiveness. See, uh, if a Pharisee and a uh, tax collector go to the synagogue, yeah. they pray. You know that example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus Christ asks the people who will be blessed at the end of the day. The tax prayer, the yep. humble one. Yes. Amen. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. Amen. See, see New Testament believes the uh, very uh, good word. Uh, uh, every sinner, every sinner has a future. Every saint also has a past. It's all about forgiveness. And uh, uh, World Mission Society is all about rituals. All about secretive, uh, they play in shadows. Uh, the harsh truth is there is a rat race. You know the word rat race among the members. Uh, uh, they run for more uh, what they call uh, what they call is fruits. Uh, they run for uh, if a person recruits more members, uh, yep. his his position will be exalted. Hmm. If he's a uh, unit leader, he'll be promoted to a group leader. There is a rat race, uh, rat race among WMC members. Uh, yeah. There is a fake love bombing. There is a fake love bombing among them. See, when you have a rat race among your own uh, fellows, how can you have a love? Hello. Sorry, say that one more time. Hold the map. Can you hold the mic up to your mouth a little bit again? They have targets of recruiting. Yeah. Every every week, uh, uh, I used to attend uh, every day for uh, preaching. Uh, uh, what we call, I forgot what we call it. Uh, preaching meetings, well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preaching meeting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every day I used to attend for preaching meeting. Uh, Every week, every month, they used to have targets. We preach for 70 people. We preach for 100 people. And they're changing their targets. In 2016, uh, God the Mother gave, let's preach to 7 billion. And 2019, she changed and she's saying, only 1 billion, in, 1 billion is enough. How stupid it is. The harsh truth is, God the Mother is fake. And... Uh, uh, the, we, uh, I, in this time, I want to appreciate Mr. Kelsey for her efforts. Mm. Uh, her video really enlightened me. Uh, especially, uh, her video made me to ask about the accounts of the church. Uh, Miss Kelsey put a video, uh, uploaded a video on uh, how much money she contributed to the church activities. Yep. See, that's the harsh truth. People are being exploited here. Mm -hmm. Economically, they are being exploited. They are yep. doing laborious work. Uh, from morning, more than 12 hours to 16 hours, they are been working in the church. Student, the harsh truth is, 
students are not en encouraged to go to universities college schools there is a violation of human rights in wmcog young students children are not encouraged to go to school colleges universities and there is a lot of severe violation of uh, human rights and uh, people like should uh, people i am unable to form the sentence people like you should do more and more uh, videos and uh, let's have one uh, interview with all the proofs i have uh, one and one you and i uh, let's together expose and it will benefit lot more members and i want to again i want to say india is a land of superstitions india is a land of uh, irrational people uh, compared to america the rational uh, rational thinking is very low literally low uh, still uh, we are very much backward and wmcog is having cake walk here literally yes. it's having cake walk yep and uh, india is gonna gonna be major uh, what you call uh, exporter or something for wmcog in next coming uh, one two years why because from cities to towns to villages it's expanding rapidly here and uh, i request uh, pastors in india churches in india should uh, at least now they should awake they should stop this cult very much cult the doomsday predictions they did everything is a cult uh, cult everything they are possessing is a cult characteristic Can yes. I make one point real quick about that? Because this is one something I wanted to say when uh, Ray was on um, about the church expanding. Is that it? It should be understood that they announce the church announces they have three million. Whether he's aware of it or not, the church doesn't that. But the church also announces, I think, that they have over seventy five hundred churches. But when they create a new church, what they do is they take existing members from a church and have them. uh rent a house and then have like existing members from that church relocate to that house to keep this so yes the number of churches just increase if you count like a house church as a church right the number of churches just increase but that does not necessarily mean that the number of members have increased as well i i wanted to make that but um but it didn't seem like uh right at the time um just yes thank you for sharing that and yeah thank you uh Ebenezer for sharing your yeah go ahead i we we are I, once say Ebenezer we are drawing pretty close to two and a half hours so i uh make it quick i'm going to try to draw this thing yeah, to a okay. close and maybe answer uh for you guys in the comments i'll try to maybe uh me Jesse and Tim can maybe look at a couple questions before we uh cut it off so WMCOG literally hates all the early reformers because it never ever mentioned uh, Martin Luther, Calvin, Gutenberg. None of them. Hmm. None of their teachings never mentioned early reformers. They almost spread hate. Like none of the reformer brought truth to this earth except Aung San Suu Kyi. I want to yeah. condemn them. uh that's something very uh such a hate towards the early reformers they are showing that's a part of their brainwashing see uh in dark ages all the reformers are in the dictat dictatorial ship of church right uh in dark ages they don't have the freedom of speech or nothing even though they came out and they spoke against the atrocities the church is uh, committing can wmcog preach to its neighbor state north korea it's it's very well criticizing the early reformers for not bringing the truth can it preach at least the good news to the north korea can they preach in dubai can they preach in saudi they criticize the early reformers you got what i'm saying right mr jordan it sounds like you're just describing the and in essence the cult characteristics of this group the this group uh and the way they they, they always want to put, portray ansang hong as a charismatic leader yeah 
And it's, uh, yeah, interesting too, your, your point of um, bringing up the fact of how they ignore the reformers. Was somebody, somebody else just jumping in there in the chat that I cut and off? Funny, funny part is they, they tell themselves as the uh, church of last reformation. They proclaim themselves as church of last reformation, but they never regard early reformers except criticizing them. Yeah. Yeah, I think what you're describing is definitely that the fact that uh, when you examine this group and like you, when you've been inside it, if you're honest and you look around and see what you're inside of, you're seeing, uh, I think what you said is just a lot of characteristics of a cult. Um, and so, Jesse, do you have something to say or are you just reading the chat? Look like you're, uh, you're preparing to strike. No, somebody asked me privately on here. I just okay. Like, whoever that was, sorry it took me so long to see that. Yeah, I was just typing. Okay. Yeah. So what I want to do again, we're we've gone probably about long enough, and so I I hope to do this regularly. So I'm I'm thinking we might just do another uh, similar deal like this next Tuesday, a live stream, and I'll uh, I don't know if we'll do it where we're inviting everybody. We might if if um, Ray's wanting to come back on, we might do a one on one or two-on-two -two deal, uh, but we do want to encourage um, current members to continue to come forward. We want to talk to you guys. Um, we're, we're seeing a lot of you come on the comments and give arguments against what we're saying in our videos, and, and just kind of honestly, it's just pretty hard to have conversations through YouTube comments and to talk and to actually reasonably share uh, different ideas. And so we can do that to an extent and we'll continue to try to do that, but we would so much rather have you guys uh, come on here and share your disagreements as Ray did uh, this evening. Um, and so I, uh, Jesse, do you see, have you seen any questions that have stuck out to you? Tim, have you seen anything or do you guys have any kind of drawing to an end sort of comments? Sorry, I'm typing something. I'm horrible. About no, you're good. You're good. Um, I I have a couple of questions here, um, and so if you if you get something, feel free to jump in. But um, uh, for, I, I guess just to kind of commentate, Kelsey, you too. If you if you see any questions, um, I, I keep thinking you left, but you you jump no, back did. in. I did. I did for a work meeting, but I'm uh I'm tight tasking right now. That's awesome. <laughs> but I can help. <laughs> Great. Glad to have you here. Um, I, I did just quick want to commentate on on the conversation with Ray, and again, obviously, say we appreciated that. That's what we're looking for. As we've been asking you guys over and over to have a phone call or to do a video like this with us, I hope you see that our we're we're not doing it to just try to attack and and make you look dumb. We want to have healthy, respectful conversations, as I think we did tonight. And obviously, we're going to challenge each other. We're gonna we're gonna challenge what you believe. We're gonna ask what might be hard questions, but it it kind of goes back to what we said to Ray. If you believe this, if you're giving your life to it, then I think you owe it to yourself to be able to adequately and reasonably defend it. And um, uh. I, I want to say, uh, yeah, I, I hope Ray comes back on. I think I think what we saw this evening is a um, a display of of what is somewhat problematic in in this group because um, when you really get down to some of the the, the nitty gritty uh, issues, you know, concerning things like Ong Song Hong's books, uh, Ong Song Hong's book, uh, there's there's so many other things that we could talk about as far as changes that have been made to Ong Song Hong's books. Uh, three entire chapters have been removed from the green book. Um, things like that, that when you, when you truly honestly examine those evidences, and I think as we saw tonight, when you put those forth to a, uh, a member, often they're, they don't really have a great answer, or, or so, I think a lot of cases, they probably haven't even heard of these things. And so I just hope um, I don't want to say a whole lot and without Ray being here able to defend himself. I want him to be able to reply back to the things I'm saying, but I do want to just say, I think that tonight was a little bit revealing. Um, uh, and I know Ray doesn't necessarily speak on the behalf of every member. Different members might've had different responses, but uh, I, I do believe that the evidence that, that we've presented tonight about Ong Sung Hong's books that's been presented in former videos that we've done, um, th these sort of things are just highly problematic. And, and in my perception, I find it very hard to see how you could continue giving your life to this group 
in the face of these glaring problems, these, these obvious contradictions. Uh, yeah. And so I'll, I just wanted to say that um, in kind of closing out that conversation. Um, uh, Jesse, Tim, Kelsey, again, feel free to jump in. I'm just going to look through. I, I wrote down a couple questions. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm not missing my only, anything. My simplistic um, response to just all that, yeah, and to honor, I really hope he comes on and anybody uh, who uh, maybe is a member um, and was watching that, just like, I hope that was a good representation of the heart of Great Light Studios and me, Tim, that we, uh, and everybody else that was on here. Uh, yeah, just that we don't, the last thing we want is to invite members on and then attack them. Yeah. And not be the heart of our Lord anyways. Um, so hopefully Absolutely. You see that and know we are welcoming want to talk about it. Um, yeah. The one thing I see is just uh, that I didn't say during that was um, I would still push the, the big, uh, the big deal that uh, for, for you to make, for somebody to make a claim, in the the bible that there is a mother god that she is in her salvation yeah she's our spiritual life my that's my response to you you know i can't just dial this down right now or i can't give you this in a simple answer so my response would be you should probably be able to it shouldn't take months of a bible study and if anything it's it's um it's deceptive to to draw somebody and say it's so clear it's so clear um, we've sat in a meeting in a church from their leader. I don't know if it's deacon or what. And still to the end of the meeting, a poor lady that got invited to the meeting still said, you have not shown me one simple um, thing that shows mother God. And it's like Tim said, there's all these so just amazing that the Bible is so divinely written, alluding to Jesus and the Trinity. And it's just magnificent. There is nothing to, you know, there's actually things like in Jeremiah that, that it was horrible that they were sacrificing to the queen of heaven. Like there's, there's actually these things that allude to like, it, it's not good. Yeah. Um, and just to end, um, this came to mind tonight, first Corinthians eight, four, I'll read from before. Therefore, as to eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. Verse five, for although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords. Verse six, yet for us, there is one God, the father, from who are all things and for whom we exist, from whom we exist and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. Um, so statements like that, is why Jordan can say mother God's a lie. That was my response earlier was like, that's why I can say she's not God because of this. That's hmm. I mean, it's not disrespectful. It's just saying, if I believe this, that's a lie. Yeah. Unless you show me something else. Yep. Simple. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Tim. All right. Amen to Jesse. I don't have any final thoughts. All I right. thought that was very well put. Okay. Well, what about your cat? I just don't want to. <laughs> Oh, she's fine somewhere else. <laughs> okay, she's uh, she's real, off in the other room studying. That's a real star. Yeah. <laughs> a real star, yeah. yeah she's studying. That's amazing. Yes. Uh, Kelsey, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, no, just that, you know, I was, I was, I was pretty impressed that he was, he, I mean, that I think he he is a good, rep- Ray is a good representation of, of um, the, the members and their, their general answers to things. Um, because when you ask questions to the members, oftentimes you'll get similar answers. So I think yep. he answered in a respectful way. Um, but uh, one thing I just would know you know for future is that uh, you know, um, like a like you know how this this meeting is on Tuesday evenings. I would suggest moving it to maybe like a Wednesday yep. or a Monday. Because They're saying they, that in the comments too right now. So yeah, because we'll they that. have they have service on Tuesday evenings. So okay. um, if because and I think it's at seven thirty or eight p.m. Okay. now. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I would just suggest that. We'll do that for sure. And, you know, now that I've done it once, I'll probably, who knows, I might be in the middle of the day, just jump on every once in a while and, and see what happens. And so, but yeah, we'll try to avoid doing this sort of bigger meeting on a a Tuesday night. I've, I've learned my lesson tonight. I've been rebuked by multiple people for that. So, (laughs) so the suggestion, yes, oh, is a good one to join who are current members. Um, then that would be, I think, uh, I think that would be best. Yes. Good point. Well, a couple of things I want to say just to close out is one, 
one of my favorite verses in relating to this is Philippians two, where, um, Paul says, uh, Philippians two, verse three, I'll just start in verse three. So he says, do nothing out of, uh, selfish ambition, uh, or empty pride, but in humility, consider others more important than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So first, may that be what we continue to do. That's our goal here. And if I've told people recently, even off videos, like um, if I'm not loving and re and loving these people, loving people like Ray coming on, loving those who are in the YouTube comments saying things like, uh, <laughs> okay, there's this comment that just when I, I saw it, the initial reaction was, man, that's probably the meanest thing I've ever been told, but it just was, it just made me laugh. And so the comment was, uh, somebody said that I look like they said I was of the devil or something. They said, I looked like the baby Satan from the passion of the Christ movie. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie, but yeah. if you have maybe pause it on the baby Satan, I kind of went back and was like, Hey, yeah, I can kind of see it. <laughs> maybe there's a, but, uh, Anyways, all that to say, there's some pretty mean things being said about us, and I, I get it. Like we're kind of we're ruffling feathers here, and we're talking about things that are deeply important to people. But I think there's better ways to respond than than the baby Satan comments. Um, but may we be responding in love and all we do. And and again, I've told people recently, like if I'm not doing that, like I know this is a waste of time. Like if I'm just getting, we're jumping on here and talking about yeah. evidence and arguments and how they're wrong and we're right. Like I don't if I'm, that's the last thing I want to do. And if I ever become that kind of Christian YouTuber, then somebody smack me in the face. Um, <laughs> if, if, can I ask, this is going to make it awkward because you probably are about to close, but I just want to go for it. This, this person, um, Tim question. So I know the Elohim at the beginning, it's plural, but I know this has to do with, I've been told this has to do, um, with Hebrew grammar, the way it's written. Is there a link that you would suggest people to go to? If you can't explain it real fast, it's somewhere they could at least go to to read about that grammar. Where would they go? Uh, I'd have to look and find something and post it. Um, but yeah, it's not always it's not always indicating plural. Okay, cool. So at least th uh, there's that from Tim. I just didn't want to this person messaging me. Primarily. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that question too. So that's yeah, good. I appreciate you, but uh, also I am not Tim. And <laughs> Dude, I, I would I would that recommend would be great if you could link if Tim if you think yeah. that it's Jordan could attach it to the video that'd be really. Uh, Good yeah, I think what we'll do is we've done multiple videos just directly talking about Genesis um, and and those scriptures about Mother God. So we can try to link those in this video. We'll probably also link the ones where we talk about Ong Song Hong's book and we go into that more detail. I did a video like a week or two ago where I just read through these places. I read through his interpretations of Galatians and Revelation, um, and so I think that's really revealing. Um, but uh, yeah, so again, Philippians, Philippians 2, it ends basically by saying that in, in the last days, it, it talks about Jesus, how he humbled himself. In Philippians 2, 9, it says, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I get that there could be arguments against that, and there are that we had hoped to address in the future, but this is a future prophecy of what's something that will take place in the future. It hasn't happened yet. This is Paul telling us that in the last days, the name of Christ we're going to be worshiping and bowing to is the name of Jesus. And so that's, that's kind of our purpose here. We aren't just trying to get people out of this. We're trying to get people to who we believe is the way, the truth and life, which is Jesus. Um, and I know so many of you talking to us, I, I get that you're coming out of this group and you're confused and you're, uh, I go back to the interview we did with, um, uh, I think his name was Nathan. Sorry, Nathan, if that's not your name. I've done so many interviews, I'm losing track of names. But, And he talked about how after eight years after being out of the WMSCOG, he finally feels like he's recovering his relationship with God and getting back into a place of feeling peace. And so I know that for you guys who have come out of this, I totally sympathize with your feeling disillusioned by faith at the moment. I would just encourage you to not throw it all out and don't run away from, don't run away from God because he loves you and he's not 
who the WMSCOG has polluted and corrupted your minds into thinking he is. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to do is I just, LSR is in the comments right now. And so this is a good buddy of mine. Um, <laughs> me and him debated back and forth for a while in the YouTube comments. I don't know how many of you guys, I see her all interacting. Um, but uh, for you guys who don't know, LSR was a member in this church. I'm not going to say his name or anything like that, um, but that's not his real name. I don't, I hope that's okay to say, uh, or it is his real name. Maybe it's not, maybe it is. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Train wreck. Sorry, Ellis. Ellis R, but this, this, this is just a, a really cool example of somebody who is in the group who's been debating with us in YouTube comments. Um, we've had some phone conversations and he's left the group and now here he is cheering us on in the comments. And so, that's pretty fun. And also just today, another, probably one of the top three or four people that's been debating us on YouTube on these videos, um, Zion, uh, I can't remember the full name, but Zion something, uh, Zion is real. I'm not, well, he's public. They're publicly, they're publicly saying in comments. So, uh, so it's Zion is real. So, um, they, they have also just today said they've left the group after, we've been going back and forth in debates. And I think Tim has had conversations with this person and uh, they're coming out uh, of the group. And so I, yeah, that's just cool. Really fun to see. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to keep doing these videos. Middle name. LSR said middle name. Ellis is your middle. Okay, cool. I uh, hope that wasn't too much information, but uh, <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you guys. Cause I, I kind of mentioned uh, in the, recently that there's we get a lot of emails and the like emails and messages in private that you guys aren't seeing and you're seeing the you're seeing the backlash and you're seeing the arguments and you're seeing the debates kind of on the front side of youtube yeah. but it's the people that are leaving this group and there are a lot are coming in the you know the messages uh yeah. through different platforms um i think maybe the last thing i want to say is just the fact that um there are we're continuing to trying, trying to figure out how to be careful with all this because um, I've had some recent hacking attempts that I was going to share in a video, but I just want to be careful about how I word this because I, I don't want to accuse and say, I know it was the WMSCOG, but everything points in that direction. And in my opinion, maybe it wasn't, I, I don't have irrefutable proof that it was, but it's in my opinion, I believe that I believe that a member or somebody from the group is trying to hack our Instagram account. There's been multiple attempts um, on both me. And then there's another person who has a WMSCOG, an anti account basically on, on Instagram. And they've contacted me and told me that they have also been, they've been receiving hacking attempts at the same time that I am to be. That's not a coincidence. That's just pretty clear evidence that it's the WMSCOG is trying to hack our accounts, which again, it just goes, goes back to um, the, 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 the character of this group and the way that they operate. If it is again, I'm going to be careful because I know another issue with this group is that they're well known for suing people. Um, honestly, if they sue me, I think that's going to do a lot to help our cause. It's going to, it's going to just continue to show their true colors, but uh yeah, they might be disappointed. They might. They will be very disappointed. Yeah, I keep seeing comments on YouTube about how I'm just doing this for money and because this channel's monetized. <laughs> and I, that's almost as funny as the baby Satan comments. Because I get, I get that too. Well, not I get it that I do it for money and also that I do it for fame. And for, yeah. Yeah, like on the last couple of videos I did with you guys, there's one particular comment that says, oh, I'm clout chasing. I had to look that up. I didn't know what that meant, but wow. uh, it means like seeking fame. And I'm like, well, wow. y'all reached out to me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We did. We reached out to you and every we're time so too. Famous. We are yeah. So famous. I'd say if you're trying, if you're trying to get famous, you're not doing so well with our 1.31,000 subscribers. <laughs> yeah. We got 35 people watching right now, Kelsey. So you are, you might not want to go outside. You're going to get people asking for autographs. Around the corner, I know. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, well, what can you do? Well, thank you guys for coming and joining and chipping in. I know there's people still here in the Zoom chat. And so I'm going to, uh, we'll end the live stream. But if you, um, I want to make sure to give you guys a chance to talk to me or sh if you want to share some contact info where we could uh, talk later. It's getting a little bit late. Um, but yeah, Tim, Jesse, Kelsey, thank you guys. Thanks.
Thank you, everybody, in the comments. This has been fun, and we'll look forward to doing it again. All right. Bye, guys. Good night.